Hello everybody, welcome back to another edition of the Tarry's Podcast. Uh, as always, I'm with another special guest. This time I'm with Davis, aka Samuel Davis. Nice, that was a good intro. Thank you, appreciate that. I've never been a special guest before. <laughs> I mean, everyone's a special guest on this podcast. <laughs> Which you can take oh, that to be whatever you want. No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> he does stuff, he does stuff. Yeah, so uh, thank, you, thank you again for uh, coming on. What was this curveball question you wanted to throw at me? A very... Oh yeah, no, I've got my own ones, I've come with my own one. Okay. Before we get into it, if you were a Doctor Who episode, like your personality was, which one are you? Oh, that's it's a, that easy. Um, that's, a, that's a difficult question, you say that's that easy, yeah. that's a difficult question. Yeah. Because... It can go profound, it can go, you can make it a quip. Mm. That's in your ballpark now. <sighs> This is real, like, let, let me give you an example, what's yours? Mm. Uh, oh. I'll flip it back oh. on you. Whoa, <laughs> Uno. Okay, uh, buh, 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 buh. Megalos. <laughs> Fair enough. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a real kind of Megalos guy. No, better yet, Power 3. I'm a Power 3 sort of man. Uh, I mostly DOS around. There's, there's promise of things happening in the future. Like, there's not a lot going on. Uh, but there's no immediate plans, actually, for the future. The third act is... Is, <laughs> is not on my radar. That's fair enough. I mean... Oh, what would I... I'm absolutely winging it. You're absolutely... I... I, I, I that's a good way to live. <laughs> what would I say? Any episode... I would say... Don't pick one with a troubled production, please. That'll be just too... Can't both have self-deprecating ones. <laughs> no, I was going to say, you know, Trial of a Time Lord, because if anyone knows me, there's a lot of sitting down involved in, in, my, in, my sort of, in my sort of life. You know, there's a reason I, my sort of fan base, in quotation marks, is called the, you know, the wheelchair gang. You know? So there's a lot of sitting down involved. Um, also, like, yeah, it just clicked. It just clicked. I guess there's a lot Very of... nice. I guess there's a lot of, you know, shouting and... Oh yeah! Any, when anything bad happens in your life, it just crash zooms onto your face. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, we all. I don't know who my Valyard is. Oh, <laughs> I can be the Valyard <laughs> today, <laughs> Doctor. <laughs> Looks into camera. <laughs> oh my dear Doctor, what have you done? <laughs> oh, God, this was that for like ten episodes. However long it is, I can't actually remember. Please. I was meaning to rewatch Child of Time Lord. I'll be honest, I watched, what did I watch, which one was it, Mind Warp the other day? I was severely disappointed, actually, because I feel like that would have been a great episode on its own. <laughs> like, I, I would have watched an entire Mind Warp thing, but you keep getting interrupted by the Time Lord stuff, and I'm like, I just want oh, to yeah. watch Seal, <laughs> leave me alone. By, <laughs> show me Seal! By the end of Child of, uh, by the end of Mind Warp, I think we're at the point where the trial scenes have no relation at all to the episode. <laughs> no, pretty much. Like, whoa, we dropped this pretense early. It's like, oh, I wouldn't kill Power. It's, that's the only thing that relates to any of it, pretty much, is that <laughs> I wouldn't kill Power. Like, she doesn't even die, does she? Does she oh, die? God. oh, God, if you want to get into Minutia that early, oof. I mean... She kind of dies, but then she doesn't, and then there's three different Perrys, <laughs> and they all involve Brian Blessed. So, <laughs> the less said, the better. The three Perrys. The three Brians. <laughs> Yes! <laughs> That's another thing as well. Brian Blessed was kind of wasted in that role. Like, don't get me wrong, he's Peter. great, but like. It's... Yeah! Swap him in the Valyard. Yeah, no, that would no, that, 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 was, that, was, that was a piss take, but now I'm thinking about it. I mean, that would actually be quite cool. Like, imagine just a super buff. Black Adder, Valyard. Clearly villainous. <laughs> it, yeah, it, it, that would be really funny, actually. I think mm. he was approached to play the second Doctor, wasn't he? I remember, oh I, I remember reading that somewhere, and he just decided to turn it down. Apparently, him and Bill Hartnell didn't get along. So, um, so um, Jesus, there's only one man in Britain who can replace me, <laughs> Brian Blessed. <laughs> Brian Blessed. <laughs> wow. About ten years before Blackadder. Blackadder is like seventies, right? So yeah, about ten years yeah, before Blackadder. Yeah, seventies, eighties. Blackadder first mm-hmm. is the best, and you won't change my mind on that. But um, that's the that's the best fourth doctor appearance <laughs> best tom baker one yeah. anyway yeah i mean that or i mean i enjoy his appearances in little britain even though little britain has an h well but like you know oh yeah yeah his appearance you, you go for tom fun. you can go for tom yeah that's fair enough so obviously we sort of went into the sort of canon stuff already which is rather fitting <laughs> For, for a please, podcast. Please, no. A, please, no, no, no. I've heard too much. <laughs> <laughs> Broke Canon episode 59. <laughs> the, one, oh, 
Don't you you just say the words broke cannon and I'll get some compulsive like some compulsive need to go upstairs and edit a whole one just flat. Yeah. So trust me, those words are off the table for today. <laughs> yeah. That's how my brain's been doing it this lockdown. It's it's a mess. That's fair enough. You've been pumping them out like oh. like Christmas presents, like Santa with Christmas Jesus. presents. I I take I, it though. I wanted Christmas presents because you make me aware of things I had no idea existed. Like I don't know. things that no human should be aware existed. No, that's true. I, I I don't know whether I consider that a compliment or an insult. You can take that to be <laughs> whatever. You know, you make me aware of things that potentially I don't want to be aware of, but you know, <laughs> I, I am now. But no, I'd like to talk a bit about your like YouTube history, We're going back in time, which is very fitting for Absolutely. a Doctor Who podcast. Uh, yeah, um, there's a lot of it. <laughs> I've been here since uh, the beginning of the site. Oh my god, uh, really? Oh my god, really? Yeah, the, the 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 dude at the zoo. That was me. The first <laughs> video. That's me in that video. <laughs> um, no, okay. So this does tie into because YouTube and Doctor Who have emerged at the same sort of time to take on, <laughs> like the like film and the train engine. They both came about at the same time, and yeah my first ever channel was squeaky 10 year old as many of us that's where many of us started making doctor who edits i think i would make like mock teaser trailers i definitely tried to make my own fan film at some point uh hasn't everyone oh. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I oh, but for the record, I adore fan films. Oh no, me I haven't too. watched too many of them. But, but like in theory, the fact that uh, Doctor Who got so many of us on a, on the same track, like-minded, they're like to the point where eight-year-old me picked up a video tape recorder and uh, recorded my remote control Dalek around the place. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. It's one of those franchises that lends itself very well to fan films, though, because feasibly, yeah. feasibly it can fit like anywhere. Like anyone can be the Doctor. Anyone can be you know what whatever so it, it, it works very well you could just say oh this is future regeneration or now or now a past regeneration but, you know, and, is... and it's win-win because whether they age horribly or whether they're actually quite good i think it's an amazing thing to see through yeah uh, there was a torchwood one that I, I was doing my research on the wiki and then i came across time agent which I d- man, this YouTube series back in 2008, it got like five series and a fanzine, and I'm just like absorbing all of it as if it's like a new Doctor Who series. Wow. I'm like, whoa! I mean, the closest like I get to that is the DW 2012 stuff. I really enjoy that stuff. Uh, oh yeah. I don't know whether you keep up with that, but I enjoy not so familiar. That. Is it like B movie territory? It's like it's, great B movie. It's 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 really good. Like the production value, it's, it's like I think you should see the TARDIS that they got. Good. God, is it? Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, my God. There's so many yeah. good uh, people. They should, why don't the BBC have all of these people hired? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Like, I, we were talking about this in the group chat because I've, I've alluded to this before. There's a quiz group chat that we all sort of exist in. Well, some of us exist in. Future people. Not me. <laughs> no, you're definitely not in it. <laughs> not me. No, there's, there's some guy called Daniel Sabus who's in there. No idea who he is. What? <laughs> I have no idea who, who he is. <laughs> Unmask him, number one, <laughs> before you get out anything else. He just makes, like, anime videos. i got no idea who he is, man. It's, it's... That could also just be me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do make anime videos. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. That was the... <laughs> He's my Valiant! <laughs> He's your Valiant. Well, Did actually, he say even the... the doctor? <laughs> Sorry. Even the damn you'll save us thing was a joke about... Because in your What I Do With Who video, because I've done my research, oh, you say damn you'll save us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Even that was oh. a reference. Hang on. How deep does this go? I know. I know. It's... I've got a guy in my comments who, who, who's my, probably my favourite, uh, who's changed his username to Guard for Davis, and he's appointed himself like the channel, not even a moderator, more like a gatekeeper, like a royal chancery, gu- chancery guard, and he's taken it. I, I've got to admire the passion. <laughs> like he he will sort people out the second they're on videos that aren't mine. <laughs> He's doing it on other people's channels. I love that. I've got a guy called the Emperor in my comments. I don't know why he's called the Emperor, but basically he calls me Terry. 
Like, so it's not even oh, yeah? anywhere near close to my name. And he basically no. says about how he, he lets all the celebrities know about my videos. Like, oh, Will Smith oh, was cool. proud of this. <laughs> and just, I all my favourite YouTubers. Yeah, yeah. Oh, great stuff. Yeah. That's, good stuff. yeah. That's networking. That guy's doing networking. I know. Really He's going to get me a crossover with famous YouTuber Will Smith. Brie Larson. Yes. It's all, it's all going to happen. It's about time. I um, think so. So I guess uh, the, the... Okay. I found very recently, and I will make a video about this, I think, I found my old 2008-era YouTube channel. It's still up there. <laughs> it's... It shouldn't be, by, <laughs> by, any, by any account, it is mortifying. It is Alonzi Alonzo, one word. And, uh... Of course it is. God. <laughs> my God. It's all made in very, like, old-school Windows Movie Maker. Mm. Tubefish, which is... Yeah, it's that kind of era. That kind of era. So, we didn't stay there too long. From there I've gone on to... Oh God, I tried, to, I tried to find a point where, like, oh, I'm making... Uh, I'm a huge Naruto fan. So, at the point where I was like, we're a Naruto channel. That went okay for a bit, but then the series died. And then I followed another franchise. And then that series ended. And it's like, oh, God. <laughs> uh, I need to... Because uh, to me, YouTube, I do insist YouTube is completely primarily a form of fandom. It's just, mm. these are my forums. Yeah. <laughs> if, there's, if there's people in my comment section, oh, I'm living. Because I, I mean, it's better God. than Gallifrey Basin, right? <laughs> exactly. I want to cultivate my own kind of people. I want an echo chamber, is what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to get some controversy. <laughs> oh. Oh, uh, I mean, dude, uh, my forum days are long, long, long past me. They, I got one dissertation out of the existence of forums and my my interest and then I vamoosed then I got out of there I am very much uh, not interested in the forum activities no I'm not to be fair like whenever I've tried to go on well I mean because they always say oh a good way to promote videos is to do it on reddit whenever I try and do it I just end up being banned so I don't really know what I'm doing wrong <laughs> yeah. but like oh, no. everyone always tells me oh my god reddit's such a good tool for promotion and stuff it never works for me um, it's strange because where do you draw the line? Because what we're doing isn't. I mean, what's the line between promotion and a fan activity? Well, yeah, that's I, the I, thing. We're, we're, we're discussing who. Like, in my opinion, <laughs> as long as, like, something is. Question marks. It is related to the, the forum you're posting it to and it provokes discussion, which is what you want yeah, in a forum, that. like, what's the issue? But, you know. Yeah, you link other threads to other threads all the time. If yes. anyone is out I there view my who, videos who has Twitter. a Reddit. Let, let me in it I'll get, get your numbers up I promise cross my heart yeah oh yeah back to that <laughs> back to networking <laughs> exactly networking is crucial no, um, so I, I can't believe you've actually been around for that long I thought you were oh, somewhat well, yeah, more yeah. recent than that it's like because obviously I I've been watching I, I started watching Doctor Who YouTube stuff in like 2013 and I don't remember you being on my radar back then no, I would not have been. No, no, no. So, uh, at that point, uh, there's either college debauchery, or I'm making videos about. I tried to be a film channel for so, so long. Oh man, I went through that phase. That's so much harder than. Oh god, it's it's one. It's impossible to crack that one. Uh, so I'll make them every now and then for a bit of fun. But uh, yeah, yeah, I've, I've I've fallen back into Doctor Who, and it's really, really surprising. Yeah, that's what. But that's like. I think yeah. that's what I did as well. Like, I think I didn't do myself any favors because the, the the branding that I have is very sort of Doctor Who-y reminiscent with the diamond and stuff. But like, mm -hmm. I went through that phase. Rest in peace, Thary's films. You will be missed. Oh, oh that sounds great fun. Oh, back I had another YouTube channel back in the day that reminds me. The name was it was me and my other friend working it. So it was Davis and the other guy's name, surnames also began with a D. Our studio name of these two ten-year-olds was Double D Studios. That's quite good. So you can see how that could be a problem. <laughs> Is it bad that I can't? <laughs> probably. I'm, I'm probably... Oh, okay. Too... Uh, well, the problem was that uh, if we'd said this out loud, I think a lot of people would assume these two 11-year-old boys were making porn. Ah, uh, right, yeah. That was, yeah, uh, <laughs> I'm too innocent for your for your Tom we were girl. so innocent, no. so innocent that we didn't even get that the name Double D Studios might 
provoke well, questions. Well, I didn't get it now, so I mean, I wouldn't feel too Brilliant. wouldn't feel too bad. I know I shouldn't have abandoned that channel. <laughs> just, just, just change the, the current channel to double B. <laughs> No, because I'm the kind of channel right now, I think, that could just start uploading porn and people wouldn't be too shocked. <laughs> Fair enough. I mean, I think... Yeah, I've been told I've got a reputation. You're one of... Uh, like, I, I would consider you, like, one of the more, like, of contrarians in terms of, like... Oh, like actual opinions? <laughs> oh, yeah, well, yeah, that's true. Uh, in, ter- yeah, yeah. in terms of, like, so. like YouTube, because, like, for example, in... I hate that term, but you know what I mean. Um, if, oh, yeah, totally. For example, like, obviously when everyone was was yelling about canon being destroyed at the time of children, you're just like, eh, canon doesn't really matter. <laughs> and like, I love that oh about God. you, that you're just such yeah. the, the complete opposite to what everyone talks about. I love it. <laughs> well, thank you, but um, I, th- I did my dissertation largely on that subject. Oh, here we go, just can't say go a conversation about bringing up the old dissertation. Yeah. But no, I, I basically <laughs> very much on, uh, I started with how forums and fandoms perceive canon. And then I looked into the literary term of it, and I thought, oh, this is uh, nonsense. And none of the showrunners we've had so far, back in, back when I was writing it, they didn't care about canon either. Well, they did in a very post-canon kind of way. Like, uh, I think it's Ross T. Davies who says, um, uh, there's no such thing as a story that isn't true. All stories are true. Every story happened. I'm like, oh, a man after my own heart. Yep. So if, if I can replicate that at all and start perpetuating that in fandom circles, yes, please. Dimensions in time <laughs> is canon. Let, let it be known that it is now canon. We have oh, we have God. we have decreed it as such. So I am post canon because then where does it where does it stop? It, what's the difference between a Battles in Time comic strip and a, and a Doctor Who Adventures comic strip? Is my dad canon? I would There's say just so. question. Oh, it doesn't end. It does not end. <laughs> I mean, you could by that one you could even like count like Doctor Who Confidential because it has the characters in it. <laughs> yeah, it's just, yeah, it's like it's an in-universe TV show behind the scenes. Just take just taking Doctor Who Confidential super literally. <laughs> yeah, it's a behind the scenes documentary about the life. The of Doctor the has been given meta awareness and believes he is a human called David Tennant. You're like, no thanks. Come on. <laughs> Someone will make that one day. Okay? Big finish. Get on hey, it. Fifteen you... box sets. Go. If you can make it into a captivating story, then yeah, I give it my I give it my blessing. I mean, to be fair, Big Finish will do anything with David Tennant. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, that's not true. <laughs> and I'll eat it all up. I mean, yeah, it's like it's one of those things. I I sort of made a point about this on Twitter the other day. Like, there seems to be this very um, big reliance at the moment on RTD era like nostalgia, and I, I, it's it's like Ooh, yeah. I get it. But also, it's like, I kind of want something new. And, I, and like people would say, well, Series 11 was something new. Let me rephrase that. Something that's new and good. <laughs> yes, please, please. Um, I mean, if hey, you you directed me towards the Series 12, and uh, I will keep it to a minimum. Yeah, I really am. It is my least favourite run yet yeah. in the show's history. I agree. It, it is, it is. Yeah. But um, the Rusty Davis issues... I'm kind of sad how more people aren't aware that Captain Jack Harkness is being dangled in front of us like a like a carrot on a stick and the Jadoon are also just being red herring. Yeah, it kind of saddens me how easily people just sort of ate it up and were like, yeah! A little bit. Like, a little bit. Yeah, it'd be fine if there was substance there if Jack came back to do anything in particular or if the reference to Shabogans w- was... Interesting. It's, uh, yeah, it's just. It's just I, I know drop, there's nothing it? behind it. I know there's nothing behind it because he's shown us for three years now that sadly there is not much behind it. It's basically series twelve is basically fan service over substance essentially. Oh um, God, I, I I need to stop saying it. I need to stop saying it. But this last one, the Timeless Child arc, was written by 1980s era chairman of the Doctor Who Club, Chris Chibnall. It yeah. wasn't written by a modern Chris. <laughs> Any of the Chris's. It's and that's just it just feels so it feels like we're so past that. Yeah, I agree. It's like it's almost like do you know when someone hasn't been keeping up with the show since like you know, like for like three seasons and then they're like completely lost as to what's going on. That's almost like what it feels like where it's like okay, so this person is that this and this arc means this and it's like do you know what I mean when you try and get like your family into a long running series and they just can't because like they're just so confused that's what it's basically with like Chibla I'm not saying he doesn't watch 
Doctor Who because I know that'll be a, a thing people say. He, not... It's fair to say he did not watch the Moffat era. <laughs> I mean, yeah. uh, <laughs> yeah, and and just like what you're saying about how it's inaccessible to people who haven't been here since maybe Tenant. In other ways, it also really is. I think because. It, you could jump on watching Spyfall and be like, oh yeah, the master and the drum beat. And it's like, yeah. I did miss the ten years in between these two stories where they had a character arc. It's like, you could totally jump on, but... Um, I think it's, it's a difficult one with, with series like this current sort of era because I don't really know what it's going for half the time. Like, half the time it wants to be this sort of dark, gritty type, you know, realistic sort of type Kill series. Me. And then half Kill the time... Me. It wants to be the super elaborate, complex, complex story arc kind of thing. Cannon bomb. And it's like, which one? You can't have both oh, it, of those things. You can't have both of those you know? things. It's trying, to be, it's trying to be an absolute lot. For as much as I don't like Series 11, I, actually, Series 12 has made it look amazing, in retrospect, in my opinion. Hmm. I, If they'd just done that again, if they had just done the... Maybe, maybe like one or two recurring monsters, but uh, no story arc as such, we're not making the Doctor, we're not throwing her back into grief and all the Gallifrey baggage. If they just kept doing more fun adventures with some cool history lessons, then I would have been on board. I would to be have honest, that's what I thought really, they really, really would do, like, for the most part. But they, they flip-flop, they did the exact opposite, and it's, it's such a shame. Just yeah. stick to your guns. Yeah. Like, don't get me wrong, I can... Like, I think Series 12 for me is, is better than, than Series 11, and even better than Series 9. Yeah, yeah, it's fair enough. Anyone who knows me, I'm not a Series 9 fan at all, but um, <laughs> I think it's better than that. I bet it's better than that, but like, I would say, I think it's more, I think it's more disappointing in a way, because it feels like we're two series in, and like, by this point, you know, Tenant had faced, you know, Dalek, Cyberman, Master, but all of those things felt in. Whereas, like, mm-hmm. Series 11, Jodie faced nothing, and then Series 12, Jodie faces everything. And you're just like, yes. none of this feels in. There's no progression there. You know what I mean? Like, that's how Russell did it. He had, like, one recurring villain, like, one main recurring villain per series. Obviously, Dalek, Cyberman, Master, and then everyone in Series 4. But that felt in, you know? Yeah, absolutely. It was... It was structured by a master of storytelling and I, I absolutely insist that franchise storytelling you get Rusty Davis yeah whereas yeah. or Kevin Feig if you want to go to you, Marvel <laughs> yeah, oh yeah if you got the money whereas I used to think Chris Chibnall was that I honestly did if I, if you look back when, back when he was announced as showrunner I immediately fell back on no guys guys look at Tortured Series 2 he basically saved a program by carving out a new identity for it made it nice and structured in a way similar to Russell. And uh, Tortured Series 2 is some of my favourite universe material ever. I mean, I have a um, confession to make, I still haven't watched Tortured. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I'm very jealous of you then. <laughs> <laughs> oh really? This is that bad, Series 1? Yeah. <laughs> oh no, 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 I'm jealous that... Eh, I think you got a lot of fun stuff to explore in there. Yeah. I'd like to watch them again for the first time. I think it's just that when it was on, my parents told me not to, and I sort of internalised oh, yeah. that message ever since. <laughs> they saw Cyberwoman in the sex gas cloud. I don't blame them. I don't blame them. I remember the... Because I just, I just remember being confused as a kid, because I knew it was a Doctor Who thing, because Jack was in it. Um, and I was like, can I watch it? And they were just like, no. And they were like... No. I was like, no. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. That sounds like very good parenting. It was. Uh, but Sarah Jane was the Jan, though. I would actually argue oh, yeah. that, like, Sarah Jane was more of the Doctor to me when I was growing up than probably oh, yes. David or Smith was. Yeah, no, I completely agree with that sentiment. When people were slammed the idea, like, the very concept of a female Doctor, I just pointed to Liz Sladen. Yeah, looking back on it, like, I was in the sort of... Well, is <laughs> <laughs> I don't look back on this particularly fondly, but like when I was oh, yeah, yeah, when I when I was unsure of the change, I kind of fell into the the certain camp. Uh, oh hey hey, yeah no, you're not alone in that. And yeah, I think like I because at the time of the what 2017, I was like 15 or 17 now, which is quite quite young still. Mm. But like I was 15 back then, and like I obviously, as you said in a video. YouTube was insistent on promoting certain internet shouty voices and I as a result sort of got sucked into that world and um, it reflected my early content I would like to think I've sort of evolved beyond it but that's really up to audience to decide but it's 
no one can blame me the internet is one big rabbit hole and it's designed that way mm. but uh, uh you can track my progress <laughs> my poor little uh 2017 brain going back and forth you can see me in videos being very earnest and saying i don't like the idea of a female doctor and that was my initial stance but it was very much like like ocd ordering reasons which i find so like uh banal now uh, basically, wouldn't it be awkward in the future if we looked back and there was a, a row of 12 male doctors and then one female one? Yeah. Who fucking cares? No, no, exactly. Because I mean, then the announcement dropped. I think, oh, yes, okay. No, I was going to say, for me, the thing that really sold me on the concept was actually Joe Martin. <laughs> Jim, I mean... Oh, yeah. Oh, that's quite late. <laughs> probably. Not that I wasn't... You know, not that I thought it was necessarily a bad concept before that point necessarily like I understood it but I think the thing that really sold me that this could work well because let's face it if you don't gel with Jodie's character you're you're gonna have that same sort of feeling about a female doctor if that's the only one you've been exposed to yeah mm, it will stay so it's good it is going to um sort of impact your judgment on the, the entire concept but like when when Joe Martin came on and was just badass I was like yeah I'm down with this can we have a series with this doctor, please? I, I, I legit like yeah. I, if they did a big finish thing, or even if they did a main series thing, I'm, I'd be all over that. Like, I, can't, I wonder how Jodie Whittaker as an actress took to that story because, man, leads in shows do not like being upstaged. And she was completely upstaged in my. In my uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, I wasn't gonna say it, but <laughs> I mean, I, I'm. I'm I'm pretty controversial anyway. Neither side particularly likes me, so it's it's whatever. Because one side, you know, sees me as a traitor to their cause, and the other, oh my God. and the other side <laughs> sees me as you know, you know, a raging, terrible person. So I don't know. Either side, everyone hates me anyway, so I might as well come exactly. out and say it. Exactly. I hate the entire concept of um, sides, though, in, in this sort of thing in general. To be honest. Like, it's, it's such a bizarre concept. It's like, what side are you on? It's like, I'm not really on any side. Oh, I just yeah. have my own please, voice. Yeah, please, just give me a fun story. Um, <laughs> please, my God. Yeah. Please, okay, or or just can we collectively grow up or shut up or move on? Yeah, exactly. Um, when, I, when I saw the reveal trailer for Jody, I was very much in a 2017 mindset where um, I think The Last Jedi was around this point as well. So I am tired of just... I'm tired of the discourse. I very much just... I think I didn't want a female doctor because I wanted to swerve these last three years of obnoxious discourse. Mm. But without any actual regard to how great... Um, how much potential there opens up for the show. The second I saw that reveal trailer show Jodie Whittaker, I had the biggest smile on my face. Yeah. And then I uploaded the video right after. I'm just like giddy. I'm like, I'm so excited and giddy because Doctor Who has surprised me again. And then I think back to my favourite story, which is <clears throat> Time of the Doctor, in which the story. final thesis, the final thesis of Time of the Doctor is, rules! You want, <laughs> you want to talk about rules? And it's like, yeah, yeah. rules are, have no place in Doctor Who, and they never have. That's, that's, that's so, fair. Like, I think for me, I was in the sort of other end where I watched that reveal trailer, and I went... <laughs> you know, but like I remember the, the way I actually found out because I don't watch tennis regularly are you kidding me I can't even move let alone play tennis except if you're talking about Wii tennis in which case I'm not too bad but no um, I, I wasn't watching tennis so I was sent an image by my by my dad um, there was, it was like one of those photoshop ones where they put Jodie Wick's face onto Peter Capaldi uh, you know one of those early ones that they did when she was announced and he said, and, and, and he said, this is the new doctor. And I was, I'll be honest, I thought he was having a piss take. Yeah, I legit, like, not because I thought that that, that concept was necessarily wrong, but I just thought, with <laughs> with how he just sent it, just this is the new doctor, I thought he was winding me up. So I go on the announcement thing, and rest assured, it was Julie Whittaker. I was one of the people who was genuinely convinced that Chris Marshall was going to get it. So when he didn't, oh, I, was like, no. I, was, I was like, <laughs> oh, Okay, I don't really know how to feel about this. And I think I was just, more than anything, I think, like, I just, I was just unsure, which I think a lot of people were, were at. Like, I wasn't vehemently against the idea. I just think that it's difficult when you haven't had a sort of different version of that character. Like, with Missy, we had Missy, but that was for the Master. 
So we knew it could work with the master, but we didn't know it could work with the doctor yet. And there was always that worry that it wouldn't work. But like, I think I would safely say now that it, it can work. I think that's oh, yeah, where yeah. I'm at. I, I think the only reason I ever doubted it were boring continuity reasons. Like, uh, oh, well, why isn't the Doctor... Will there be a uh, off-the-cuff line about why the Doctor's never been female before? And it's like, wow, yeah. Uh, and then even just four years later, I sincerely do not care. That must have been like the last of that continuity thinking going on in my brain. Yeah. And then from here out here, uh, man, it's just stories for the sake of stories. It's so much... So much more liberating. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Like, I, this whole canon thing, looking back on it, I don't really like what the Time Earth Child did, but at the same time, I don't get the people who get super up in arms about it. Like, there's there's literally people crying over it, and I'm just like, it's a retcon in a TV show. Like, chill out. That's One of multiple. It, <laughs> this has been done before, and it was fine. Yeah. I mean, I think as well, you could, this is the, that's the beauty of something as long as this, is you can sort of take and pick and choose which bits you believe and which bits you don't believe, and that's like the oh, yeah, sort of... Oh, yeah, yeah. Fans form the aesthetics of their own series. Yeah, that's it's always been that way. And every and everyone sure. sort of ignores the, the McGann thing, you know, within being half oh, yeah. human. So, like, if if you if we can ignore that, if you really want to ignore the time this child, exactly. go, go ahead. Like, at the end of the day, it, it's not up to... The, the people who make it to you know decide what you take in and what you don't take in that's entirely up to you so mm. yeah I don't know canon is one of those bizarre concepts that I have only really become more aware of during the series 12 discourse like back before then I wasn't really bothered about it and then obviously everyone was talking it should only ever serve the story in question that's where I stand with it you can make some brilliant stories from continuity bombs um, big fi- this all big finishes out there the for the last war. ten years. The time war was literally that. It was literally just Absolutely. one giant. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It matters about what you, why you're doing it and what what kind of stories it's coming with. And um, I think yeah, that's, that's what I said about. I think I said that in a video once that like as long as it affects the characters in the present and it leads to something interesting and it you know doesn't feel arbitrary and useless and like why did you do that then. Uh, you know, it's not so, it's not so bad if you get what I mean. You might not like uh, it. Necessarily. It fully might. It fully might. It, it very I feel much like good. it's burned up a lot of good faith at this point. I'm where, um, I'm almost I'm, I'm convinced though that they're going to barely mention it in series thirty. Do you know like yeah, Do you know like how the paradigm Daleks barely get mentioned after like series five? I think that's what's going to happen with the Thomas Child thing. They'll just sort of sidestep around it. That's my guess, but like I could be wrong. I'm gonna stop making predictions with Mr. with Mr. Chris because uh, he, he I've spent the last three years kind of batting his side a bit, even though I haven't liked his output, and I kind of feel like I've had an egg on my face every time. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just gonna sit back, and if I need to get drunk, like I did during the Timeless Children, and laugh openly at the screen to enjoy it, then yeah. I'll do that. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. I still get just as much fun out of it. Yeah, that's fair enough. I think, like, with with Chibno, you, I think he does sort of stick to his guns more than than Moffat did. Moffat really wanted to be the, oh, the, yeah? the, 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 the showrunner to please everybody, I think. Like, obviously, mm. people didn't like the Panam yeah. Daleks. I'll get rid of them. People didn't like... Um, what was the other thing? The, the hybrid. I won't mention it in series 10. You know, stuff like that. Whereas, like, with Chibnall, he seems very just sort of set on doing his thing and not really caring. And that's a that's a blessing and a curse. It's a blessing in the sense that it makes the show feel more consistent and things just aren't randomly dropped. I've got a... I'm holding up my hand. Go on, go on, go on. <laughs> uh, ooh. What, what, why it's burned up the good faith for me is completely because it has done it. It's pivoted on the spot for Series 12 for me. And I... I think it's only come to me in the, the last year or so. I think Chibnall has been quite consistent, like you've said, but Series 12 really got into my skin because it seemed to spit in the face of everything new Series 11 was trying to do. Yeah. He's a new Doctor with no baggage um, and a breath fresh of life, and we're going to put the Doctor in situations which none of her male counterparts could have been in before. And there was a bit of that in Series 11. With the uh, witch funders and stuff like that. Oh, oh, yeah, and the... Uh, even my favourite one, Demons of the Punjab. Yeah, oh, the um, the speech 
at the end. Speech of love, speech of love. That's my 13th Doctor right there. But I haven't seen her in a while. You know? <laughs> so the fact that Series 12 did um, kind of fall back on old tricks, that's the inconsistency that's made me feel like, oh man, is anybody at the wheel? Yeah, no, I, I, that makes sense. I think my biggest issue with 13 is just that, obviously, that's your, like, 13 moment that you would say you've had so oh, yeah, far. But like. that's the thing, that's the thing. That, sorry, I, I didn't finish the point. <laughs> yeah, no problem. That's the thing. Is that, was that ever Chris Chibnall's intention? Probably not. Was that not. actually the Doctor? I'm not sure. I genuinely don't know if that was ever the take for 13. But here's me in 2017 and 2018 defending, the, oh, she's this Doctor, oh, she's this Doctor. Yeah. And, uh, I, think, I think we're doing more work than the showrunner. <laughs> yeah, my biggest issue is just that I haven't had that moment with her yet, where I go, mm, mm, yeah. that's this Doctor. There she is. <laughs> I just haven't had that moment. Like, I've come close. The closest I came was Haunting of Lydia Darty. The bit where she's like, this team structure isn't flat, it's mountainous, me at the summit, da 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 da. That's the closest yeah, I've come can, to being like, mm. And as you can imagine, I obviously hate that, because it's the opposite of, uh, it's the opposite of new. Yeah, that's true. Although it did but feel uh, like more like I, I the get Doctor why people too, like it. You know, and oh, that's yeah, the exactly. thing. I, I remember you saying yeah. that you felt annoyed at Spyfall when that came out. Me, oh, Spyfall Part One. You didn't say the S word. Spots. No, no, no. Spyfall, Spyfall, you didn't Spyfall. Say the S word. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I remember watching that with family. It's the first time I've watched Doctor Who with family in like God knows how long. Because uh, I was at my dad's at the time, uh, my dad's side, and it, we watched that. Uh, together because I was like please can I make notes on it <laughs> this is the only thing I, this is the only thing I do with my free time it's like fine <laughs> so um, we watched the episode and after it they're like this is what you complain about because Spyfall Part 1 from an outsider perspective from a casual fan it is just kind of more Doctor Who <laughs> like it, it's very much like a any it's like a lot of TV shows Spyfall Part 1 yeah I mean I just it does it's feel good. a lot like you know sort of what I think a lot of people think Doctor Who is um, so I think oh, yeah, yeah, do, yeah actually doing a series premiere with a parody to a different genre is very strange now I think about it mm, yeah that's true they normally save that for like Christmas and stuff don't they yeah I, uh, but then again god Moffat started season opens with worse <laughs> yeah let's yeah, absolutely what, what is the season 7 or well, series seven, I should say, because people are gonna have a go at me for that. What was the series uh, seven? I can't actually remember. That was Asylum of the Dominics, which yeah. is so that's isn't okay. that like ten years old now? Yes, is it? Holy yeah, that's it hit some kind of milestone, and everyone was like, "Why would you want to remember Asylum of the Daleks?" I'm like, "Come on, man, <laughs> leave it." They alone. do that for every like episode. Leave it alone. <laughs> then again, you see every every time they post something like that. There's always that one comment that looks still infinitely better than what we get now. Yeah, oh, man, yeah. Don't use a sign with the Daleks as your, as your, as your comparison point. <laughs> yeah, that's fair enough. I mean, I, um, I do love it though. I hesitate to say I like it. I don't know whether it's as bad as some people make it out to be, but. I don't know. For me, it's very much one where I do not understand the criticisms, and I know that's strange. But I, this is the kind of story where term, I really do just turn my brain off and go, "Ha ha, yeah, funny Dalek planet." <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Um, so that's I think the onus is on me in that instance. Yeah, I think to me, <laughs> not series engaging seven, with the episode. Series seven in, in general is pretty underrated to me, but like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah okay. maybe that's because Split it's my childhood doctor. Like Matt Smith was my. Sort of, oh, is it? Yeah, I would say, well, like, yeah, 2010, well, like, I probably, like, no, that's the one I watched, the first one I watched from start to finish. I started with Tannen, and then sort of, wow, okay. but, like, late Tannen. So, like, at my first episode was The Next Doctor, which is a kind of a baffling place to start when you think that there's, like, <laughs> two Doctors yeah. and, like, the Cyber King and, like, a, a fake another doctor with a normal screwdriver it's, it is it is kind of a bizarre place to start but I started there and I could not think of many worse I could not think of many worse no but like I got it though like I think a lot of people take for take for granted like how much kids can actually get like if I if I could understand oh, yeah, that yeah, yeah. I think people would probably understand things like some of the stuff that Moffat did like if they started with yeah, say you're right I don't know you're right I know 
Deep breath. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm not a huge fan of deep breath, for sure. <laughs> oh, deep breath is... A, okay, it's good, but it's a strange starting point. It, there's a lot... It's asking a lot of a viewer to go with the lizard lady. Yeah. Go with the doctor not knowing who he is in a... In a I don't know. There's, there's a couple stories that Moffat did, like uh, The Magician's Apprentice. If that was the first time you would ever watch Doctor Who... What the fuck? What do you make of that? <laughs> yeah. The plot doesn't there's, start. It doesn't a, find the plot until forty the, minutes in. There's a child who also turns out to be that guy who that is guy. Um, also with the doctor, but the doctor just met him, and then Miss, oh, then Missy, yeah. who's apparently the master, is there, and there's this confession dial, and the doctor's dying, and there's a guy on a guitar, and I'm, what's going on? Yeah, I can imagine that. I'm not bit. envious. I'm not envious of whatever poor kid had to start with that one. Yeah. I no, that would shout out audiences. You are correct, though. Uh, many people can do underestimate the pure power of episodic entertainment. You know that you've missed stuff, and you can fill in the blanks and catch up. I, I say that about Big Finish quite a lot. I watch a lot of, I listen to a lot of Big Finish out of order, and I do get the gist. I don't particularly <laughs> listen to Big Finish in order. I just listen to the ones that I find look cool, <laughs> and that's a very immature yeah. way to pick stories. But like, you know. Um, one of my favourite ones so far is, is Davros, the one with six yes. doctors. That's such a good story. Woo, woo, woo. So good. Um, it's just literally him taking over an entire company, you know, like easily, just with like a like a code, and it's just like, damn, Davros, you got that stock market under control. <laughs> hey, hey, he's just a guy in the marketplace of ideas. <laughs> exactly. And like, that's the thing as well. The six doctor has probably gone up in my estimations quite a bit. I don't know where I would I you know, know, rank him, but, but so I don't know. Oh, he's he's easily on my. I mean, I say everyone's on my, my favourites these days. Uh, before I started this this uh, this recording, I was listening to one of their big Finish and Perry ones, uh, Sick yeah. Doctor and Perry stories, one of the new ones, and I just I love that pairing on audio. They're easily one of my favourite scenes. I love them. I have to watch more of the Sixth Doctor and, and Perry stuff because I've mostly just watched. In terms of like the Sixth Doctor stuff, oh, I've right. watched a lot of. Them. I didn't say watch. <laughs> right. I mean, let's well, let's just, I know what I, big difference. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, there's still a picture on it. I mean, it doesn't. Yeah, move. I just want to make sure no, I'm not recommending anybody to uh, mark the Rani or something. <laughs> then, I no. Me. But um, what was I going to say? As I, I've lost my point. The other one I watched. Listen to, I did it again. Was Daughter of the Gods? That's pretty good. Yes, yes. So good. You are a man of taste. Thank you. Or you're just falling into the really good ones. I, I think. I, well, I'd like, let's go with the former. <laughs> I'm a man of taste. <laughs> let's go with that. Uh, no, I really like that one. I think Peter Purvis actually does a better voiced impression of the First Doctor than David Bradley. I don't know whether that's controversial or not. But oh no, no. David Bradley's doing his own thing with it. Yeah. No. It's just, it's I'm good, the, like, he's the first doctor, it, but I'm not going to do an impression. No, I would you know? find. I think David Bradley, if you want to get, you know, the first doctor in a visual thing, like, that's as close as you're going to get. In terms of audio, yeah, yeah. though, like, I like Peter Purvis's take on it. But, you know. Yeah. I mean, it's like with how they hired Jacob Dedman for everybody. I'm just like, stop doing that, please. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, let him be. I'd. In Dudman's case, please just let him continue doing the 11th. Oh, the, he's, he's, he's 11, don't get me wrong, his 11 is, like, incredible, it's uncanny. His 10th is pretty good, his 9 is his nine is very underrated. <laughs> I am they did not need to get Eccleston back, they did not need to get him back. Yeah, you could have fooled it's me. It's cool that he did, <laughs> but, you know, it's cool that he did. But, no, like, <laughs> but they could have saved a lot of money in tricking me <laughs> into thinking. Yeah, it's true, that's true. <laughs> Probably with, very legal. With Jacob Dudman, like, he just can't do 12. Oh no, and that's in my most recent video. I did, I did, oh, I did roast Mr. Dudman just for a second or two. Um, Don't get me wrong; he's a very talented voice actor. Like his eleven is basically uncanny. Like it's it's yeah, it's, it's scary. He's, he's, he's inhabiting. But I I also listen to Regeneration Impossible. This is where this whole rant came from, which is like the short trip with eleven and twelve. Both of them are like at the end of their like regeneration sort of. They're at the beginning of their regeneration cycle. Or regeneration period, whatever you want to call it, um, and they were and like eleven. It's it's very jarring because eleven is on point and twelve really isn't. So it's sort of like one half of it feels super authentic, and the other half feels completely unauthentic, and it really does take you out of what is admittedly a relatively, you know, bland story. There's not a lot to it particularly, but it's it it does sort of take you out of it. They should get me to do Capaldi. Go on then. Go on then. <laughs> it's all part of my conspiracy. You've got to do, to do your my Capaldi. Terrible, 
I'm bringing my terrible Indian Scottish Capaldi into the big thing. Indian recording Scottish booth. Capaldi. Yeah, yeah, well, he's a good one. I love him. I mean, we could just make Indian Scottish Capaldi a pre heart doctor. We, we can just do that now. <laughs> yeah, sure, why not? Fuck it. <laughs> oh, that's going to annoy some people. But, like, it's just the, just the words pre heart doctor are going to. are going to. Infuriates people like I. I don't like the concept of that, but I'll admit the Twitter accounts are pretty funny. I don't know whether you've yeah. seen like the ones that are like, this, your fave is a free heart or doctor, <laughs> and it's just oh, yeah, every yeah, person, every person. It, I don't, it doesn't take up space in my brain, it really doesn't. <laughs> I'm, I'm probably going to forget it in a year or two. I, it doesn't as much anymore, like now that I've got it sort of off my chest. In like you know, because I did a very reactionary reaction video. Funnily enough, it's almost like they named oh, it yeah, that. No, for I, a I think I did too. I, d- I don't remember what at all what I said in mine. I've probably repeated it here. <laughs> but uh, I, I remember. Was, like, I remember the time child video to the extent of canon is fun, but arbitrary. Basically, what we're saying now is like it's just a very loud, pronounced answer that's on TV. Said something like that, something to that effect. Um, mm. so, and yeah, that's basically what you've been saying now, to be fair. So I don't think it doesn't seem like your opinion of it has changed particularly a lot. No, I don't, I don't think so. It, it's just uh, disappointing that a showrunner thinks he can put down his canonical foot and here's the answer. And it's like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. Yeah, you don't have the answer in a, in a series owned by nobody. And it's also called with Doctor a, Who. Like, with a canon defined by nobody. <laughs> it's, you think. Moffat, for all his faults, was absolutely beyond that. And Rusty Davies doesn't care one way or the other. But, um... Well, no, like, yeah, I think... Cha- chairman of the Doctor Who Society. I mean, yeah, that says a lot. I mean, I think we said this in, in a chat before, like, in the thingy chat, that I think the best way they could have done it now is, like, give it a break and then have someone who sort of grew up with RTD slash Moffat to take over because then that way it would yeah. feel like true mm. to the to the um well, hang on <laughs> uh, yeah it's my mic's on I did I thought my mic was off for a second it's not but um oh yeah yeah no I'm still reading you loud and clear but no um uh, I was gonna say that like if you if you do that then they would it, they would feel true to what knew who it's sort of built at whereas when you get an 80s fan in kind of like as you said it doesn't fit in with anything <laughs> You know. It's very tired. Oh yeah, I remember that conversation. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, I remember the timeless child. To me, at least, feels like uh, something you would do post uh, post Re- time skip. Yeah. Post so when re- the revival yeah. comes back, it feels like this is what Chibnall was trying to do. What he would have done instead of Rusty Davis. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I, I, yeah, I think I agree. We need some new fresh blood for sure. We can't keep regurgitating. Minutia. But that's the point I made in like I did a I did a video called like Why Doctor Who's been stuck in a loop for a decade. And it's basically yes, talking. I like that. Oh, I know. Oh, you saw it? Oh, that's yeah. That's that stroked my ego massively. No, I'm just kidding. Um, no, it's it, I made the point in that that's like they keep handing it down to the same few people. You know, like yeah, it's it's handed down to the same group of friends, and I'm just like. Get some somebody just completely random, kind of like to do with doctors from time to time. Just get someone who nobody expects. You know, like how Matt Smith, nobody knew who he was, and then yeah. he, do that with a showrunner. Just get somebody completely random. Why not get an American to run it? Why not? It doesn't it's go. very strange how all aspects of TV production are quite cliquey, except for actors. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> I'll think on that for a bit. Oh yeah, that's that's another brick cannon. Yes. Oh no, my god. I just say the word. Uh, say the word brick. You can't say the words broke cannon. I I know the next thirty I want to make, and I will edit them right now. Oh my god. Uh, no, that's no, incredible. No. I, I I love that those videos, but no. no um, not. What was I gonna no say? Way. What were we actually talking about? Series thirteen. What are your sort of hopes for that? I. Pl- the only stories I've enjoyed from the Whitaker tenure are the, are the books and the comics, but on TV, the only ones I've really enjoyed are the disconnected, mostly historical ones. So these are probably going to be controversial, but don't judge my taste. And just like, I loved Praxius. I loved Demons of the Punjab. I liked uh, Can You Hear Me? I, hmm. Oh no, no, it doesn't run short there, does it? It can't just be three. Yeah. Oh, and uh, it takes you away. 
But um, and Rosa, Rosa's alright as well. But I, I like these episodes because they're very disconnected. They're not. They're some of the few offerings we've been given, which don't contribute to some series arc, which is empty and there's nothing inside the mystery box. And I also like them because they've presented, they've told stories that no other era would have even dared do. Uh, mm. Would Moffat have possibly done a Rosa Parks episode? For better or for worse? Yeah. I'll be honest, if they, ever give me, they ever give me, like, me. they're not going to give me the show, I But, like, let's say in a hypothetical what if scenario they did, I wouldn't have the guts to do it. So I do admire that about it. Yeah. Like, that they had the it guts so to make it. it. That's actually the closest thing they've had to a new motive or direction for the series. So, um,. Yeah, more yeah. moments like Doom, Demons of the Punjab, where she gets to go on the girls' tent and wear a flower in her hair, or, or, or just uh, oh god, just anything that puts this Doctor into new settings and new scenarios. It kind of because, baffles uh, me they haven't done like a, a suffragette episode yet. Like that's yeah. that seems like something that's perfectly Uh-oh. up this ten years street. Um, oh god, the Daily Mail are ringing me. Jesus, <laughs> <laughs> they're not happy. I, I just mean it in terms of like, if you're gonna pick a sort of time period that they would probably do, like the Suffragette seems like the one that they would be keen to explore. So I, I, I could see that. Um, if, if Series Thirteen gives me just a bunch of completely disconnected, unrelated sci-fi stories, and then some like new unearthed history, like they've been doing, and we don't even have to worry about a series arc, then please. Just, and... Chip, hey, Chris, Chris, you don't have to write half the series, buddy. You yeah. don't have to write half of it. How much did you write in series 12? You did write a bit less, didn't you? A little bit less, but, like, also, there were fewer episodes, so... Oh, yeah, actually, well, there were fewer stories, weren't there, because, um... Ser- and he took all the multi-parters. Yeah, yeah. Actually, so that's. Still... Not, I I think I agreed with you because in one like one video you said that it felt like a half series, and I kind of agree. It's <sighs> that's the that's. It doesn't matter how bad a series is or how inspiring a series is. Give me more of it. It it's the biggest crime you can do cutting a series in half. Yeah. It, it yeah. just less who is good for nobody. No, I agree. Except for not not my doctors. Yeah, <laughs> and you. I don't know whether. Did I show you that show that, you that clip? That clip? Of one of them going off at me. Um, oh, I won't say. I won't oh, say that. oh, hey, hey, we don't need to talk about that yeah. fucking clown. Yeah, I'm not going to say any of those. I, I mean, as I said, I, think I will bring up the chat and say, <laughs> if we're going down there, I will say, say some of my more fl- flavorful language. Yeah, I mean, as I said, some of my more yeah. colorful stuff. There's a, there's a certain person that everyone knows that I know who is worse in my opinion than the guy you're on about. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. oh yeah, yeah. Hey, they're all indistinguishable to me. They're all hive mind. They're a hydra. They share a fucking brain. We, they don't need separate names. Rusty, Rusty. you're connected to the Dalek <laughs> hive mind. <laughs> NMDs are fine. We'll, we'll just call them that. The NF, the NMD of hive mind. And I, I was part of that at one point in my life, but I kind of broke away, which is kind of. I I was that for a different fandom. I'm sure it, it's. It's inbuilt to the fucking online fandom experience. It's, it's was it Ghostbusters? Just a, just a random question. No, it wasn't Ghostbusters. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, was a, I was a bit old for the Ghostbusters conspiracy okay, in 2016. Um, I'm trying to think what was I don't before remember, that. I don't know which one it was. I don't know where you're guessing. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I just mm. fan, I fancied it. Fancied it uh, what you call it? A guess. But no. Mm. Um, I mean, I... It, I tried to never be toxic with it, but I feel like recently three of my favourite childhood properties have fallen through, and I, I think it's more a case of, like when the 13th Doctor announcement happened, it's more a case of, I, it's not that I want this series to fail, I want it to always succeed, I'm just so tired of the discourse surrounding it that I associate it with pain or a nuisance. Yeah. So, because like, it was late last year, Doctor Who was happening, um... And I wasn't, it was not in my good books. Star Wars Rise of Skywalker happened. And I think collectively we were just beyond the discourse there. Everybody was just fucking fed up of talking about Star Wars. Yeah. And also the Pokemon controversy happened around then as well. There was a, um, there was a, oh, 
Oh, you want about yeah. Sword and Shield? Dexit. Dex. It was called Dexit. And was it? Brexit. Oh my god. Uh, I kind of love that. That's terrible. Uh, yeah, because didn't they say that, like they removed a lot of the previous gen? Like Pokemon, yeah, and just, just, like, just some sloppy game making. It's nothing out of the ordinary, but um, I mean, that really does surprise me though. From like, well, I know it's not Nintendo specifically; it's Pokemon Company, but still, it always does surprise me um, when people say how little polish. And you compare like Pokemon to like Botwa, Breath of the Wild. It's like visually, oh, okay. vis- I'm with you. Yeah. Visually, they're not even in no, the same. There's, 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 sleep. there's no excuse, but um. More to the point, it's uh, more that I feel like because all three of these things coincided in my brain, so if I like, okay, all the things I like are antagonizing me, and that was uh, terrible. Yeah. If I went back in time to a childhood Sam and said, "Hey, ten-year-old Sam, everything you love, it's still around in the year 2020, and it's kind of bad." That, I don't know how the how Every, you would take that. Everything you think you know <laughs> is a lie. <laughs> Just go back and tell oh. us how that is. Everything you think you know is a lie, Doctor. <laughs> Everything you think that you know. That one line is inspired a, 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 a 30 part web series. <laughs> that that oh, that was the reason I made Broke Cannon, that one terrible line. Yeah. But um I mean at least no, we got something good out of it. But I think I know what you're on about in the sense of I, I wrote like I said something last night on Twitter like like it was something like me looking at the Spider Man Twitter to escape the toxicity of the Adopt U Twitter only to realise it's just as bad. And like yeah, it's, it's quite staggering the, the similarities symptoms. between those two stuff. things. Because uh, I said that it's yeah. it's infighting between different groups who all love different incarnations of the same character, who all think they're either Without intellectually we- or morally superior does their preference, yeah. etc. You know, it's, it's, oh, it's, it's, it's basically the same thing. And it's like, fandom never seems to live. <laughs> no. You know, like, I, I, I'll admit I contribute to this, because I guess if you could put me into one category, I would be the sort of not, you know, like, the anti-Chipnall channel in the sense that <laughs> maybe I should rename oh, myself. Oh, that's the thing. That's going back to the whole sides thing. That's, that's the whole... Uh, universally contributing towards it every time I say um, that I like Hellbend or every time I say I don't like uh, a, a Whitaker episode or every time, time I anyway, say you know that the entirety of the 12th Doctor Zero is overrated I'm sorry okay, okay. stuff like that <laughs> that I will overlook on this instant yeah. <laughs> I wrote a tweet about no, that as well like everyone like unanimously <laughs> just, the 12 the Capaldi stands just extended upon me I was like I like Capaldi oh, I just think that and that's it that's exactly it that's part of it and uh, there's no way to avoid it other th- whilst we're existing in fandom and doing fandom activities there's, there's, that's the point of fandom yeah. but um, it's just like you said it's crazy how these franchises and characters and IPs have been around for decades upon decades and have existed in all these different forms how has no fandom collectively understood yet that that's the point and why haven't we embraced the fact that this character will eventually and has to be everything Scooby-Doo, for God's sake, has been around since the 70s and has a bloodthirsty X-rated comic. I love that, that the fact that that exists. Long-running franchises will be everything. Thor was a frog once. Thor was a, was a woman once. Uh, it, it, <laughs> you're going to have to mix up or die, but don't worry, Doctor Who fans, Marvel fans, slash Star Wars fans, they're going to snap back to the default image of them anyway yeah like what are the, so what are the chances that it's going to be either well it'll either be a male doctor next or joe martin it's going to be one of those two i i reckon Ooh, okay uh, we, i think we've definitely got another female doctor coming Absolutely. you reckon otherwise um yeah and like i said back when it first happened i think it, you run the risk of making it look like a bad stunt if if you don't like stick the landing and if you go immediately back and make it a man again then that could look bad in retrospect in the future potentially but then what you could do to sort of counteract that is have the roof doctor be really caring it's like you see guys it still works <laughs> here i am making my token appearance <laughs> yeah. yeah great stuff uh, Chibnall. well actually thinking uh, about it if she was a token character that would be that would invoke a whole new discussion <laughs> which uh, oh, i think we're already there i think we're already there but let's not go into that yeah. uh, I've, I've done enough series 12 bashing for yes today, let's actually. talk about other things um 
What else? Do history. Oh, history. Could I, could I talk? Oh, oh yes, yes, let's do that. Okay. Uh, two thousand five. Rose. Rose, but also maybe the TV movie. Oh yes, are you a TV movie fan? Yeah. Uh, not any. I I embrace the TV movie. I'm gonna <laughs> pretend I didn't. No, I'm just. I, I just love the TV movie. Like not that ironically. I embrace it. it, it it's very existing. I'd it's say, very existing. I'd say it, you can't deny that the TV movie exists. No. It's good. It's a lot of fun. I just wouldn't call it a, a traditionally good episode, a conventionally good piece of TV. I think for me, it's it's one of those things. I think, as you said, everything has to be everything at some point. So seeing Doctor Who as this sort of, you know, big budget at the time, you know, American mm-hmm. production, it's quite cool, to, you know, to see and like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, a lot of people... It's a, it's, a, it's a looking glass. It's a really good looking glass. I will give it that. A lot of people give, give it flack for, oh, the, the, the master is a snake person, but that already sort of happened in survival, so I don't know whether that's so different from what we saw in survival, to be honest. Um, yeah, not at all. So. You know, I think... I, I wouldn't have liked the American series had it been a had it been a success. I wouldn't have liked that. Probably not. But I do like the TV movie as its own artifact. I do. I, I, well, part of me is curious. If I had the ability to, like, travel between parallel universes, I would like to go to a parallel universe where that series exists. Just to yeah, see what I it's like. It. You go there, I'll go to the Scream of the Schalke one and see what animated Doctor Who gets up to. Hello. Oh, that'd be fun. That would be fun. And then... And then I'll go to the Curse of Fatal Death universe, <laughs> where they made like a, a, a spin off parody series. Because I think that'd actually be quite good in the vein of Black Adder. Oh, what? So, like. It's too late now. It's too late now. But, uh... I mean, they could do it though in a similar format to Black Adder. Like, every series is a new yeah. sort of yeah. incarnation. Could have happened. P- people back in 1993, they, they liked those doctors. They took them seriously and wanted to put them into actual BBC books. Hmm. So. I feel like we missed out. I want to go to that parallel world. I gotta say, Jim Broadbent would be a great dancer. <laughs> and I also think, you know, Rowan Atkinson as well. All of them. All of them are perfect. <laughs> oh. No, I, I like his work. Moffat, what a man, huh? What, what a writer. <laughs> yeah, Stephen Moffat. I mean, to be fair, he, he, he did, you know, Female Doctor before it's cool. So you gotta give him props for that. Absolutely. Um, actually, as a 2005 fan, what is your opinion mm. on Time Lord Victorious? Uh, because y- you are theoretically target market. Yes, yeah. Um, I- I'm basically in the camp, like I think you might be, where I just... More 13, please. Can we can we get 13 working first, please? Yeah, that's my, that's my thing. Like, and, and also, it just feels... It just reeks of desperation to me. It's like, hey, De- hey guys, remember Waters of Mars? Remember when the Doctor <laughs> was was evil that one no, time? But dude, you say that, you say that, but then in the back of my head, just there, I felt like, yeah, yeah, I do remember the Wars of Mars. That's awesome, I love the Wars of Mars. Maybe it's because so that's maybe... not really my nostalgia. Maybe that's why I struggle to exactly, be excited. Exactly. Like, but I have to channel that voice with the other voices. Because mm. oh, I'm obviously an angry, angry voice. A, a Smith era fan. So if they did like what, like what they were gonna do. Say you know they, if they had Smith on for another series, they were gonna eventually have him be darker, yes. which is where a lot of the ideas for Twelve came from. They announced that as oh, a big finish yeah. thing. Sorry, we'll we'll come back to that. We'll come back to that. Okay, go on. <laughs> yeah. But like, if they announced that, that would be like my nostalgia. If they announced something like that. You know, like an unbound thing, like an Elseworld thing oh, where they make time. eleven dark. I'd be like, yes, yeah. The nostalgia doesn't work for me. It, it really, at this point, it's dulled. I t- uh, the only thing that has captured, like I felt something again, were two times where I was the, oh god, I was there for the final days of the Doctor Who experience, and when I finally was on the TARDIS set, ten TARDIS, I was like, okay, it feels like something's wrapping up now. This, this is completed there's closure here. as someone who lives in Cardiff I can tell you that ah, I, can we swap can <laughs> we swap wait where do you live <laughs> depends where you live Essex oh 
man, I'm I'm down here with Graham. I don't want to be ta- uh, in Taui, goddamn. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my love. All right, cockle. Cool, cool. <laughs> no, um, I went before it opened, like before it opened, and on its last day when they had Cyberman there. Well, like Cyberman, oh, they had Cyberman to coincide the second with. Day. I was there the second day to last. I was the day after, so there was like oh. for the last day they went out with the band because it coincided with World Nothing Time Doctor Falls. They had Mondasi and Cyberman, um, Cyber Cyber. Well, they weren't Cyber Cyberman, but you know what I mean. Cyber Cyberman and yeah. Nightmare and Silver Cyberman walking around. Yeah, that was that was excellent. That was the first time I'd ever been, so um, yeah, that was important. I needed to get that qu- down quick. It was sort of like an emergency trip to Cardiff. Yes. And it was, it, oh, I, I so miss it, because as someone who, like, you know, has goes to Cardiff Bay every so often, there's just a hole there now, because <laughs> yeah, it's just a gap there, and it's, it's, it's very, it's very sad. Uh, you can still go and pay your, pay your tributes to Yanto, though. Yes, so. we can do that. I mean, as someone who hasn't <laughs> watched Torchwood, that watched is Torchwood, really so. to me. Like, <laughs> it's really weird, though, to me, because I went to, to York some time ago, and they... Obviously, the, the one of their streets is the street that they based Diagon Alley off in the films, and they really mm-hmm. capitalised on that in York. Like, there's a bunch of Harry Potter shops everywhere, you know, oh, yeah, the whole, yeah, there's a, there's a sm- the whole smattering of those around the country. The whole shebang, and then you go to Cardiff, and like with the amount of stuff that gets filmed here, you'd think that they would capitalise on it a bit more with shops and stuff, you know, mm. and they just sort of don't, and you're like. That yeah. seems like a wasted opportunity to me. Like, obviously, the the rift where Torchwood is is like right there, and there's like shops around. So just have a shop that you can get Torchwood stuff in, or Doctor Who stuff. In. <laughs> it seems that Torchwood has not stuck around in the collective consciousness of the country that okay. much. All right, make it a Doctor Who shop believe. that have have some Torchwood stuff in it, then, if you wanted to. Yeah, I I don't believe that for a second, and of course that place should exist. But Doctor Who. Yeah. Like, yeah. I know there's always something operating around the country, Doctor Who wise, but uh, yeah, that seems like a such a needless loss. It just seems like a waste of opportunity. Like, I went to like our like main shopping centre, Saint David's, yesterday. It's one of the first times I've probably been out in Cardiff since the lockdown, and it was quite surreal in some ways. But there's this comic shop there that has like all your TV movie stuff, like not TV movie as in the Paul McGann thing, I mean like, you know, like... A shop just for... <laughs> I would open it, but no. <laughs> it's a shop for like all your pop culture stuff, and there was a bunch of Doctor Who stuff, and they had like a solid shelf of Torchwood stuff. Like they had like Yanto Jones figures, and you're just like, what kid is going to buy a Yanto Jones figure? I was a kid when that Yanto Jones figure came out, and I didn't want that Yanto Jones figure. Exactly, like what kid were they? Uh, who was who was who was that for? Because like when I, I did buy a weevil, I guess some. Uh, of, I did buy a weevil actually, a nice six-inch weevil. I guess yeah, some of the yeah. I guess some of the adult fans as well like like to collect figures. Like I still do. You know, nearly eighteen, I, I still like collecting the figures. So maybe that's who they were really for. But <laughs> it's like I don't know. It was just surreal seeing something really not for kids have like these cute little action figures oh yeah they, they never really knew how to do tor- how to market tortured <laughs> I was actually quite baffled to the fact that I never really saw any Sarah Jane ones there were a few there were a few were they? Um, they weren't great because like that seems like the perfect thing to do action figures for because I don't know yeah. what's good ratings for CBBC because like it's it's subjective because it's a kids channel but like it got enough seasons yeah <laughs> that, that show it must have done if, well that show if Paul Liz Sladen was still with us that show would have gone on for 10 seasons they yeah, have enough might, ideas it might still be good yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah I bet it would be the fact that it didn't end when the Doctor turned into Matt Smith is sort of testament enough that thing had yeah. staying power I'd have loved to have seen Capaldi with Liz Sladen <sighs> I just thought that myself. Because um, I don't know if you saw this, but there was a recent video that surfaced of him meeting uh, John Leeson, who's the voice of, of K9. And like, yes. you can see like him ha- having a fanboy moment as well. It's just so, it's so awesome. <laughs> we don't talk, oh man, we don't talk nearly enough about how good Peter Capaldi is. And that's crazy because we talk about that quite a lot. Oh, what a man. What a stallion of a man. He, he was. Anyway, <laughs> oh god, where did, where, where did the stars? Nostalgia, boom. Tunnel of Victorious isn't going to work for me on a nostalgia level because I, that 
that itch has been scratched a lot anyway with the Titan comics and the big finish. Especially stuff. if you're an R two D era fan as well. Like a lot of the yeah. nostalgia stuff is ta- targeted. I'm full. R T D. I'm absolutely full. Can we get some Matt Smith era nostalgia, please? I announce Matt please. Smith for big finish audience. It's okay, I want. Yeah. I want it. Yeah, bring them. They've, they've got Missy. They've got, kind of got Arthur Darby now, which is weird. They could Enjoy have, a Rory spin-off. They could have Matt Smith meet John Sim. It could happen. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> That's the top of my list as well. <laughs> I, I, mean, I don't know. It's just as a, as a uh, Matt Smith fan. I really want to see him meet a master. Like, I don't know. Cause it, it feels like... As long as it's not the Sasha master. The love and doctor can never meet the Sasha Master like... because they are the same character. They're the same character. Maybe that's why I like the Sasha Master. You can't do that. <laughs> sorry, I'm very insistent about that. I- I'm sorry, I like the Sasha Master. I can't help it. Mm-mm. That's the it's the one thing where I'm just a dickhead about apparently because I just don't even. <laughs> no, no. To be no, fair, no. it's the one part of this era that okay. I'm like. You did good. <laughs> That's the exactly, one. and if if people if people got latched onto something, they were like, "Yeah, this is for me." Then. And that's and that's what yeah, that's what Sasha's master was, and to a lesser extent, Ruth Do- Ruth Doctor was. Like, I think it might see more of her. Like, she 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 could be that as well. Um, yeah. But yeah, in terms of obviously, other than that, Time Lord Victorious. Obviously, you got the Ninth Doctor audios, and you did a video on that. Um, I'm very full. Yeah, I'm very. I'm fully satiated. Mm. So you, so you, not particularly excited for that, or, or are you still? I'm, uh, I love the multimedia stuff anyway. So I'm completely up to date with all the Titan comics. Um, I really? will read anything they put out. I, th- I think all of them, and all the novel writers. Are, I think, oh god, thirteen, the thirteen Doctor's novels, those, and combined with the Titan stuff. They all do a better job of show running and give us giving us a distinct TARDIS team than Chibnall has so far. Oh, it They're giving doesn't me take glimpses of Thirteenth Doctor. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, sorry, Ben, I didn't catch that bit. I just said doesn't take a lot. I was just sort of having a little. No, bit of <laughs> well, jam. it doesn't. But the fact that a bunch of novel writers with only like a couple bullet points on a series bible managed to carve out a distinct Thirteenth Doctor, and then I read that book and I'm like, I can visualize her. Mm. and then two seasons of a TV show can't really do that to the same extent then I start to have questions yeah and, uh, the Titan comic stuff are brilliant so if, if, if she is in any book or any comic or any live theatre immersive experience then I'll probably try and be there Fair because enough. I'm desperate for content I am yeah. desperate for content it is, it is one of those things with with this doctor. I think the gaps between series is doing it no favours as well. Oh, can we just can we just put an end to that, no matter who the showrunner is? Yeah, I, I just it's one of those things with the gaps where it's like it feels so lacklustre. Doctor Who content feels so lacklustre at the moment where it's like we're like like obviously I occasionally do the old news bit in terms of Doctor Who news. And it's like what do I cover? Oh, Time Lord Victoria's got a five second trailer thing in my bob with a random Dalek that says, I must form the universe of Lord Doctor. How am I going to make that into a 10 minute video, BBC? Tell me how. Yeah. It's not going to happen. Big finish manages somehow, barely. Who manages? Yeah. Wait, who manages? Big, f- oh, oh, big finish. I'm just talking about Big Finish's um, social media campaign. <laughs> big Finish's social media, though, is better than. Yeah, it's better than most. It's better than the official Doctor Who social media, in my opinion. God. Oh my god! Defining moment. Oh, sorry, I hated the whole advertising campaign this year. Hated oh it. yeah. Big, no, big Finish it... are good in my books. I know that's probably a nice little hoovy in an o- in an office somewhere in, in Covent Gardens. But whoever is doing the BBC social media. Mm, Obnoxious. Only five episodes left till the amazing finale. Stay Something ch- crazy's coming. Stay tuned, like, oh please. God. Please stay tuned. Please, we need Best this. D- <laughs> <laughs> Everything you know is about to change, don't you know? <laughs> don't you know? Uh, yeah, I got, I got it. I got it. I think that knows about to change. And then it didn't. But, uh. Yeah. Oh. Sorry, uh, what tangent got me onto discussing the politics of the Doctor Who social media page? Well, that's what podcast is all about. <laughs> <laughs> How did I get here? My brain just 
betrays me sometimes. Particular, particularly my podcast. They get very tangent here. I you? like this format. I do like this. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you like it. People do seem to like it. I'm going to be a co-host. <laughs> I've decided. You know what? Why not? Screw it. I'm, I'm going to be a co-host. <laughs> yeah. You, yeah, I legit, like, sometimes it does get quite lonely on own. It's amazing. So, so why not? I mean, you've got a... My first podcast, it was so good that he made me he made me a co-host on the spot I <laughs> thank Why you not? Thank that's you. fine no, I mean you've got you've got more star power than I do <laughs> no not at all not at all that's... oh god boy, no boy, boy. Uh, no I, this has been a really fun one though like I, the thing is with these is it's difficult because you know, there's probably going to be noises in the background of this recording because like sometimes my family come back and forth and do dishes and stuff so if you hear oh, any yeah. dishes in the background of this, I'm sorry, because everyone always complains about it. Oh, do you sit? Because my bedroom's right next to the kitchen, and everyone's like, "Oh, did you record this in the kitchen?" And I'm like, "Yes, I did. Leave me alone." <laughs> you don't complain about my side either, guys, because I'm working on some old, miserable tech here. The, the whole YouTube project is done on a laptop that is currently in two. It is in two pieces. <laughs> uh, it's like a dual monitor, but it's the keyboard disconnected from the screen. It's really quite something. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm worried there'll be a small hum, but. Um, I mean, it, yeah. I can hear a slight thing, but it's, it's not noticeable enough to me. So, but. Oh, comments about the sound crush me. I, they absolutely dip. Yeah, like on that Doctor Who loop video that I mentioned, like there were people saying. Oh, this video is great. Your audio compression, and I'm like, what is audio compression? I don't know what you're all about. I don't know. It audio. kills me because I know that right when they say it to me, but yeah. I'm, I try and I try and I cannot work out the kit. I'm, I'm very dumb. Problem is as well, I not got the money. Not everyone can Make afford easy. like blue yeti mics. <laughs> no, you know, it's like not everyone can afford that. So you've got to try and take that into account when. I think that's the thing as well. I think YouTube commenters would be a lot nicer if every YouTube commenter was also a YouTuber. <laughs> I think that'd be fucking bedlam. <laughs> I think that'd be crazy. But like, can you but, imagine? Uh, like, yeah, I don't, I don't think I, like people would be as mean about certain things oh, if yeah. they knew how difficult it was to actually make. Um, oh, man. In in um in uni, uh, I I was really good at sound in uni. Uh, I was the sound technician guy in uni some t- some years, but uh, then I left. And then I realized, what was the kit I was using? Oh, it's Sennheiser. And the, the equipment they trusted to 20-year-olds were 7,000-pound radio mic kits. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I don't have that money. Anything and, uh, sounds good on them. <laughs> yeah, I'm not... I don't have academia money. No, so, um, me neither. That humbles you. That humbles you a bit when it comes to YouTube production. Yeah, like, no, definitely. Like, I think I'm a I'm an A level student, and currently, obviously, we do. Obviously, last year we had to do media, like a film for media, and everyone was struggling with editors, like editing, you know, like watermarks and stuff like that. And I'm just like, ha ha. <laughs> none of you, Doctor Who, has prepared me. <laughs> none of you have exactly my. The truth of none it. of you have my pirated Sony Vegas. I mean, totally legal yeah, Sony yeah. Vegas software that I use. <laughs> yeah, I know that one. Yeah, but, I mean, you oh, wouldn't. Boy. You wouldn't know that your videos are made on a laptop, though. Like, <laughs> oh, nah, a bit, a bit, a bit, 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 bit. I, I, I The could. operation is falling apart, is what I am stressing. So. <laughs> SamuelDervis.com forward slash Patreon. <laughs> oh, yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, what an, that's an organic transition. Actually, it's a Kofi page. <laughs> oh, yeah, Kofi, no, yeah. No, I didn't, no, I didn't no, remember no, you mentioned That's brand new, and I don't know how I feel about it, but I, I'm not at the stage where I get to, like, you know, be picky. How, how, so, how receptive are, are your audience to stuff like that? Like, I know, like, it, it varies, because I talk to... Um, Channel Pup, aka Will Grantham, aka Absorbaloff Guy. Um, <laughs> the only reason I said Absorbaloff Guy is because this is a Doctor Who podcast and people might not know who I'm yeah. But, um. No, no, I know. I know. He obviously has like, what, 45 odd K subscribers and he really struggles to like encourage people to do the Patreon. Uh, I don't know whether that's because his yeah. audience are younger, because he talks about Spider Man, Batman, and stuff. I think that's what it is, probably. But, it, it's possible. It depends yeah, on like God, try and get them across from one platform to another, which isn't as easy as just a link. Yeah, it's, uh, like I wish, I wish all my tough. YouTube subscribers 
you know, went to my Twitter, but it just doesn't happen. Just doesn't. Oh, hey, they don't come to my Twitter either, man. Don't worry about that. And Wait, I don't yeah. want. Them Am I following you? Frankly. Wait, hang on. Am I following you? Let's just check that. I can no, check this. No, out. that Twitter is a, is a hive of very oh, yes, I, voices I, I mentioned I am, earlier. I am following you. There you go. I think the only, I think I started following you when we. Because I wanted to talk, mention you about the podcast, which I did. And here we are. If you think there's too much shit posting on my YouTube, do not go onto the Twitter. Uh, <laughs> those voices, they run the show there. But, ah, uh, my God. Uh, uh, the Kofi thing is more, it's brand new. Uh, it's I'm kind of going on a pay what you like model. So right. it's more like leaving a tip than, I don't think my stuff is worth worthy of a monthly subscription, personally. I mean, but, uh, it's... It no. seems pretty high quality to me, but I don't know. No, because YouTube's in- an inconsistent game. It is. It's a, it's a little app game that I open up on my phone. Um, and sometimes people just... Uh, suddenly, all the little people disappear. <laughs> sometimes they come back. And uh, <laughs> sometimes they all congregate around one random video and you'll have no clue why that happened. Yeah. So uh, what I'm saying is I won't be seeking a career in social media management. I think that's the thing about that as well, is that never go into YouTube thinking it's going to be a career. Oh, it's just yeah. so, oh you're going to be so, it, you're in for so much disappointment. It's, it's so inconsistent. Sad. Like, literally, that, that one big video they keep going on about, because it's like, my most popular video in, like, forever. Uh, it's like, I think it's my second most popular video, something like that. Um, so that's why it keeps getting brought up. But, like, the video after that, got like 3,000 views which for me would normally be pretty good but when you put it next to 44 it's like hmm oh, all the joy gets sucked out right there and then in what you just described yeah yes. it, it's that's, that's the death of this hobby exactly and, it, and, uh, and a lot of people say oh I just don't look at the numbers for me I don't know how you can do that because it's oh I very much do look at them but then I also know that I can't really influence it one way or the other so <laughs> I think it's I'm one of these people who will try and influence it as much as possible like if I if I put up a video if you're in like my discord or my twitter or anything like that you know about it <laughs> or even in my immediate circle you'll know that it exists because I I tried that with the film stuff and the probably the narrative stuff at one point <laughs> and, I, and I just have no shame which in a way you've kind of got to be like hey we're, we're Doctor Who we're Doctor Who video makers <laughs> <laughs> you can't have any shit in making Doctor Who videos no, no I think that went out the window a while ago I think that went out the window in minute two when we started doing Trial of the Time Lord impressions yes <laughs> Daleks on Tarans Cybermen <laughs> that will never fail to get a laugh from me this, this is why I love this is why I love podcasts though because it's just such a wide variety of things that you that yeah. you discuss another thing we could mention actually obviously we mentioned Out of Time very briefly I think at some stage what did you think oh. of it did you listen to it yeah I liked it it comes under the same thing where this is like this should be my nostalgia but uh it's serviceable and fine. I'm, 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 I'm tired of all these events. A bit. Oh, these, these multi-doctor oh, things that seem to happen like every what month. What the hell are we going to do for a 60th? If we even were going to celebrate the 60th somehow, we're probably not. The thing is, it's people a... keep going on about the 60th. The 60th, that's not even that big of an anniversary in no, normal terms. No, I, I was alive. I was alive and a Doctor Who fan for the 40th anniversary. Is that true? Hang on, let me do the math on that. Hang on, I was I've as well. 40th... Well, barely. <laughs> I've got 40th Doctor Who merch. I do have collectible items from... Because it was 2003, 2003, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, no, okay. I'm, I mean, I'm probably... Mm. No, that is pushing it. I w- if, if my starting point was the TV movie as a kid and also Rose. No. Mm. Regardless. I was hey, about... Hey, what? Regardless. If I was born in July of that year, I would have been... Born... Two, three. No, 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 like no, no! Don't do that. Four or five months old, <laughs> something like that. Because no. <laughs> don't age me, man. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, I am one of the younger ones in the Doctor Who sort of. <laughs> Again, who? I'm withering them. away. Yeah. I'm aging. <laughs> I've just started aging spontaneously. That's crazy. Do you remember, do you remember Project Lazarus? What if you could yeah, put that man. into no, a No, I don't remember really Project Lazarus. I watched, I listened to Project Lazarus like a couple years ago. No, I meant, I, meant, I meant the Lazarus experiment, sorry, from series three. Oh, yeah. I was oh, like, yeah, yeah. what if you could concentrate all of that into one little screwdriver? That's what I'd do to you. <laughs> I'd just age you like 500 years. Yeah, no, that just happened. Yeah. Um, and now I'm just, uh, I'm a useless whirl of trivia. That finale is, is underrated as well, but... <laughs> 
I like the, the series three finale. I mean, the, the obviously. Oh, the, you mean the one I always bash on my awful channel? I, yeah. Sorry. Sorry about that. No, it's yeah. No, it's good. It's good. I just don't like the ending. I never liked the ending. Yeah, I mean, I think there's been worse endings in, in Doctor Who before. Oh, like, you're definitely right, and I've just remembered they showed last of the Time Lords in my final year of college in media class uh, without the prior two episodes. Mm. They just put that on, and uh, I'm sat in a room with people who aren't Whovians, and I'm just like, I'm, either, I'm, I'm, I'm in a cold sweat because I'm like, oh my god, this is mortifying. That this is some of these people's exposure to Doctor Who, just being thrown into the deep end. And quite quite a cartoony, weird episode. Out of curiosity, what did you think of it? What did what did what did they? What did the they, other two are way better. What did they? What did they think of it? I mean, do you know? Oh, I don't remember. Yeah. I, I'd said nothing. I don't think anybody said a thing after that lesson ended. Mm. Because because all the lesson was was them putting on Last of the Time Lords. I mean, to be fair, uh, I can think of worse yes, ways media. to spend less. <laughs> I mean, yeah, no, there were, there were, there were worse ways. Uh, what's the? Well, I guess the only other thing to do with telephone boxes that I watched recently with Bill and Ted face the music. Uh, but that's not. I mean, it's not technically out here yet. But I mean, I can talk about Bill and Ted three if you want. It's just. It'll go on for another twenty minutes. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I hated it. Really? I hated it. I loved the first one. The second one's pretty fun. Yeah. I thought the, the third was so soulless, so mm. weirdly disconnected. If you sat down to listen, if you sat down to marathon all three in a day, uh, you would get whiplash from the third film. Yeah. I, I mean, I quite enjoyed it, but I will say, I'm coming at it from the perspective of I got into the Bill and Ted movies during lockdown, so I'm a very oh, okay. new fan, which is actually, I, I think that gives me an interesting perspective on those movies, uh, because I, re- I, I, I adored the first one, the second one, I wasn't as hot on, it just, it didn't same, have same. the stuff that I really came to it for which was the time travel stuff yeah is, is yeah. way better it's way more fun and then the, well, I still enjoyed the characters then there were still some fun moments obviously death was introduced in that one. Oh yeah um, and then focus the, journey the is one, super creative I enjoyed the, the third one it's not as strong as the first one not by a long shot the second one I think maybe they're on par the second and third one for me maybe maybe the third one is slightly better than the second one for me there's no end of the first one like I'm not sure really how I think I think I get that perspective. I think mine comes from a place where it, they're very much eighties and nineties movies, like yeah. carved into yeah. their DNA. And this one isn't a Bill and Ted throwback. It's a modern comedy with modern actors with a modern sense of humor. But these characters are also in it. But I and, did uh, like it, how it in that movie they kind of show how sort of dated their sort of naivety are in the, in regards to like how they act, like. I kind of like that it's they, they still feel like they're they're living in the eighties in a weird way. I kind of liked that. I don't know. It's it's and I also like how their daughters grew, grew up with all the stuff that they did because that's what they got them into. I like that. The daughters I liked in general. To be fair. They're all cute. They're all very cute movies. You can't really have too much of a problem with any no. of them. But, uh, I mean, I definitely would say I hated the third one, like you, like you, but um. I mean, I was I just left empty. I left so empty. I can't. I can't. To see me, it that was on par it. with uh, Ghostbusters: Save the Call, where it's like, did you need to do this? Ooh, that's controversial, right there. Is it? Cause, no, 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 no. I'm fine with that movie, and I defended it, and I laughed out loud in the cinema when I saw when I saw it. But I'm not gonna. Looking back good. on it, it's probably just average flock that's got the Ghostbusters name on it. It is. It's it's weird Melissa McCarthy improv. Mm. It's Paul Feig improv, which is a very acquired taste. Yeah, and it's, not, a, really it's not really for Ghostbusters. It's not for a franchise taste. film, and it's definitely not for Ghostbusters fans. The weird, sad eighties fans they are. <laughs> so, right, whoa, whoa, I went weird there. Say, I went really say, say, mean there. say the Doctor Who fans. <laughs> Yeah, weird, weird, <laughs> eight, weird uh, 80s Ghostbusters fans. Sorry, I'm, I'm too used to being mean about that era of fandom because they're the one they they are the NMDs now, and they're, they're the ones who created all these weird approaches to canon and fandom that we have to sort of navigate through now. Doctor Karen. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, big time. I, I think it's 
because I, I majored in well I didn't major in that sort of made it my speciality I fell into fandom studies in my final year of uni mm. and uh, a really great book I have to recommend is um, Textual Poachers right and that is very much it. he wrote the book on fandom studies completely but it's there's a part in the book where he tries to compare 80s era nerds to minorities as if it, as mm. if they're an oppressed class oh, for like in Star Trek yes. and I'm like I I know what, I know the point you're trying to make but it, that's aged mm. and and 80s fans very much do think of themselves in those kind of strokes sometimes I'm not making sweeping statements I'm not in the impacts of in the impacts of left on fandom I think it's a very different approach Mr. Chibnall. <laughs> I mean... Chairman of the Doctor Who Society. How long is it before we get a nerd Lives Matter hashtag? <laughs> oh my god. It'll probably That's happen. That's the only way this year's going to get worse. You just you just came up with it. Wow. If wow. any of... Uh, if any repressed 80s nerds want to use that, please don't. <laughs> you don't have my permission. <laughs> <laughs> Geek is a slur. <laughs> Jesus. Oh my Sorry, god. Sorry, I'm, I'm a very jaded man. Oh. Um, I probably should have opened with that. I'm a very jaded man. Leave me alone. <laughs> Podcast ends. Oh. <laughs> 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 um, uh. If I could finish off with like a bit of history, because uh, I, I keep getting, I keep sidetracking yeah, myself. Yeah, I want to actually know what your sort of. Because, like, obviously, I feel like a lot of your videos are about. Obscure facts, factoids, and stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether we know yeah. much about the real stuff. <laughs> that was really oh, corny, yeah. but go on. Ooh. Well, you're getting the inside scoop. Go on. Uh, okay, so massive, rushed to, uh, massive, massive Doctor Who fan. It kind of took over my life in a way that nothing else had because uh, I guess look at me, I'm a 10 year old when David Tennant arrives on the scene. Yeah. And Christopher Eccleston just appeared on my. Oh, God, sorry. No. <laughs> Let's start from the beginning. Let's start from the beginning. My parents tell me there's a show called Doctor Who on tonight. It's the first episode. It's come back. It's been away for ages. It was on when we were kids. And I'm like, all right. I didn't want to watch it. Yeah. I didn't want to watch the first episode of Rose because in my brain, for some reason, I thought it was a 90s comedy called The Master of Disguise. Okay. Now, <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. It's got a man, a bald comic man, who pretends to be a turtle. Right. And that's the bit. The whole bit is him going, turtle, I'm a turtle. And for me, in my nine-year-old brain, that was what Doctor Who was. So I wasn't very interested. I don't know how kids come up with this shit. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but then you watch Rose, and I, I need to stress, Rose is a c cultural phenomenon that instantly, I mean... Chris Raxton just hooked a whole generation of kids with one monologue. Or one word. If you want to say just oh. run. The word run just... Oh yeah, okay. Alright, maybe that. Yeah. That's good too. Yeah. Uh, I was thinking the one where the... The earth's spinning underneath our feet. Yeah. Oh, oh yes. That's yeah. what... Yeah. That's the sort of line you're like... Oh, okay. This is a... Uh, this is more than a TV show, isn't it? And then... Because... Uh, I was a little kid, and this, that's just how Saturday, Saturday evening TV worked. I didn't know how many episodes of this there going to be. When there's a cliffhanger in Aliens in London, then the Doctor is dying, and it's the first cliffhanger I've ever seen. And I'm like, is that that could be the end? Next one could be the end because that's how TV is sometimes. And uh, basically, the next fifteen years of me getting very spoiled with genius writers and just masterminds and franchise storytelling. And uh, I think we've all been so lucky, and that's why we're a little bit surprised when someone comes along who is a bit messier. Yeah, that's fair. I think I think actually that is a good point. We do forget how much Doctor Who we've been given and how how early it could have ended. Actually, thinking about it. like because it could have both Davis and Moffat, we've gone so lucky. Well, yeah, like for me, obviously, I come from a somewhat different perspective for you because like Matt Smith was like the first proper one that I watched all the way through. And, like, that could have very easily not have been a thing. Because they wanted yeah. to end it after David Ten, because they thought that no one could Crazy. carry it on. And it's... Mental. And then they gave it to a 26-year-old. And he nailed it. He nailed it. <laughs> yeah! It's crazy! <laughs> and he's so good. And it's just... 
for me, like, I think the one in, I don't know, I can't, I think, can't of, think of, like, the exact moment, moment that I'm like, yeah, this, like, this show is for me. It probably wasn't in the next one. <laughs> don't get me wrong, I have a lot of nostalgia for the next one. <laughs> the Cyber King arrives. Oh, yeah, <laughs> this, this changes everything. Don't get me wrong, I have a lot of nostalgia for that episode. I'll probably look back on it more warmly than most. For, yeah. Very good. Um, and it is, it is a lot of fun for me personally, but like, very good. There's and I actually, somewhere, I have a signed Rosita picture, <laughs> which is oh wow, yeah, oh my favorite companion. Yeah, exactly, best companion. Um, no, um, <laughs> what was I going to say? Um, so I come from a different perspective from you, but like that's the beauty of it, is that we all come from completely different perspectives. Yep. And we all have it's different it's ideas. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's the absolute best thing. The fact that there can be no consensus, and for some reason, the fandom hasn't uh, communally understood that yet. Mm. That there can't be a consensus. So hmm. that's why I always strange, find like certain, that's why I always find certain people who like when someone offers a contrarian point, who just like lambast them. It's like, well, they're coming at it from. Understand a... how much of that I get. Mm. Oh, I hate it. I get a lot, obviously, I said. When I said I thought the 12th Doctor's era was over, <laughs> just sort of whisper it there. Um, you know, I feel like you've got a percentage of the fandom with you there. No, I think alone, alone. the way You're I not... describe it is the yeah. general public love Matt Smith, but that's so as a result, the sort of fandom, the, the more tight knit community feel protective of Capaldi who doesn't get as much love whereas like with Matt Smith it's the reverse if that makes sense whereas like Matt Smith oh, that's all this, gets love that's from all this infighting again yeah. it's, it's tribalism I'm not here for no that. I'm not either but I'm just, <laughs> I'm just trying to deconstruct where the tribalism is and it's it's, it's oh, yeah, there yeah, in a sense yeah, of I think yeah. people feel very protective of Capaldi because he wasn't really uh, respected by mainstream media like there was even that that article that came out a while ago that was like oh, yeah, he wasn't yeah. universally loved and it's like that's just that's, that's, you probably shouldn't say that in a BBC article <laughs> it's classless someone got fired for saying something like that against Catherine Tate am I remembering that correctly? did they? anyway forget that tidbit Any, on the on the set of uh, Partners in Crime somebody said uh, uh, a, a crew member said something along the lines of how do you feel about people like being conflicted about Donna coming back and then yeah correctly that's a very unprofessional rude thing to say mm. about a major star but I guess hey British journalism yeah <laughs> yeah <Ooh. laughs> but no keep it classy you can. I just think that like when people offer contrary points the thing that not to do is just to say you've had a bad take yeah, it's, it's so I, tiring. I hate that that idea that you can have a bad take because, in my opinion, no take is truly bad unless it's harmful to others. In which case, that's a bad take. You know, if, it's yeah, exactly. if you're literally exactly. spewing hate at somebody, then that's a bad take. But yeah, if you there's no take more valid than another one. But if you engage with with a, if your reading is has more to it, if you've engaged with it a little bit more, that makes it a bit more useful, maybe. Yeah, Maybe there's more but then again, I don't like that idea because then it gets the classic Who fans to go, our opinion is more valid than yours. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I do see how that results in gatekeeping. Yeah, but I mean, like, there's more for me to, uh, there's more for me to interact with. Because, like, if, if if a comment just says, uh, like the the review one I did, all the mini reviews, Blink deserved a ten, and you've given Kill the Moon a ten, then I'm just like, well, you didn't explain why, so we can't really have a conversation yeah. about it now <laughs> no but it's like when I've, I've seen a lot of the nimmt the not my doctor people nimmt. be like um, the nimmt that sounds like a doctor who species the nimmt the nimmt I am absolutely if I ever get the opportunity I'm going to call my alien race the, the nimmt the nimmt <laughs> yeah. the nimmt uh, a lot of them yeah, say that uh, a lot of these fans have only been around since 2005 they don't get you know Morons! And it's like oh, I hate them. Yeah, you look, know the ones. That, you know yeah, exactly. Tom, hey, the people. Hey, if you ever meet, if anyone says that's you, send them my way. Yeah, yeah. Send them to me. I'll sort them out. Give it, get Samuel Davis to give them a punch. Get like, get Sam Davis. <laughs> <laughs> the one with that fucking obscure weird video series. It'll sort them out. <laughs> well, what, what was that? What was that one? Um, broke catapult, something like that. It's just. <laughs> <laughs> it's just him shouting at a mic, talking about canine. 
is not what most oh. Doctor Who videos are, just fans yeah, shouting yeah, at mics, yeah. to be fair. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's what my, most it, of my yeah. videos are. <laughs> love it, I love it. Um, I think... Yeah, there is, um, I think I made... Earlier in lockdown, I, I tried formulating a point. I tried saying, basically, <laughs> what... Oh, God, give me a second, give me That's a second. Okay. Your brain is chugging, your brain's chugging. Hmm. No, my brain has uh, it's gone somewhere. It's gone somewhere else. That's interesting. <laughs> What's because there is so little consensus. What is the? How do you qualify what is a good classic episode of Doctor Who, for instance? Mm. Because we're all watching these these stories divorced out of their programming slot. We're not watching Seeds of Doom as a new piece of television that we compare to other. T- for me, context. how I would say it is, how well does it hold up now? And I don't mean in terms of visuals, because that's not fair on it. But I mean, in terms of, like, its story and how it's written, if it still holds up now. Like, my personal favourite, like, one of my personal favourite classic Q stories is Two of the Side Men. And to me, oh, yeah, but that yeah. is, like, almost what I would consider to be the textbook Doctor Who thing. In the sense of, yeah. like... You know, archetypal who that's there's yeah. you've got there's Cyberman, classic Bible villain, obviously it, it, yeah, that is like the series Bible to me, in these in terms of classic who at least. You know, you've got But then but then I also do wonder how much that we've inherited from previous fans. In yeah. A way. I feel like this rule book kind of got written before we were born. Most likely. I mean for me I watched Next Doctor, then Two with the Cyberman. <laughs> so so I, I think that's why the Cyberman is probably my favourite villain as well, but um, oh, no. <laughs> no, no, absolutely, and, and we all did get started on the same classics. My first ones were Remembrance of the Remembrance of the Daleks and Earthshock. So I gotta say, I think Earthshock is slightly overrated as well. <laughs> but uh, a bit, a bit. Yeah, I just think it, um, it drags a little bit, which you could argue it, about all the classic. It's but I agree. the only moment. It's the only moment of humility in the whole Fifth Doctor era. So, whenever he's being nice to Adric, I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm feeling good. But then he dies. <laughs> Yeah. And kill him. I I do love how how much that death is like. He kept its prominence though. Like I love how people still talk yeah. about that. Yeah, oh yeah. It it kind of put you on an uneven footing. From there, anyone could die beyond this point. Like I have a lot of respect for Earthshock in that respect, in terms of like. And then big finish. Forty years later, we'll bring them all back. But uh, whoops. <laughs> yeah. Um, Seriously, man. N- name any companion who's died, and I'm telling you, Big Finish has made them safe and sound. Um, which companions have died? Um, who died? The one is it Katarina who died? She survived Katarina? Daughter of the Gods, didn't she? Actually, exactly. She had an they extra story. Of the gods. They gave them Daughter of the Gods. They gave her a nice happy ending. Yeah. Harry. Yep, yeah, they fixed that. <sighs> Yeah. Maybe maybe Stephen Moffat secretly been running Big Finish this whole time. <laughs> hey hey, when he does it, <laughs> it's also very contrived, but for mostly good reasons. It's for better reasons. I still think I guy. still think Bill had a perfectly fine sound off. He didn't need. No, Matt, you can't kill off the first gay companion. The first like, you know what I mean. The thing you is, can't, in my be, head, that that, that mean, didn't that, register that, as an issue. I guess, but like. I guess you, uh, you make a point. Um, but Clara, Especially though. Especially how chip Clara, though. Like, come on. Face the Raven was okay. perfect. And then you just go, psych. You will need a whole other podcast for this opinion, my friend. You will. You'll need well, a whole other episode. This is the benefit of you being the co host now. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, everybody. Oh, 50. Hundred more episodes last in a hundred years. Yes. Just, just that bit. Yes. <laughs> that bit at the end of Rick and Morty. <laughs> <laughs> hundred seasons, more than hundred, no, hundred years, hundred episodes, hundred years. We were on something. What were we just talking? Uh, we were talking about classic who and like how do you define a good classic who episode? Oh yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm back with you. Like, uh, I mean, my the reason I'm watching classic who I feel like is is different. I'm not trying to find stories like Robots of Death or Brenner Morbius or Seeds of Death. Like, I just. If I sit down and watch Delta and the Bannerman and I just accept this mental, absolutely insane piece of TV, then I, I start to wonder what the criteria for the separation between good and bad is when we're talking about 
decades old sci-fi. It's so subjective, and that's the thing as well. Mm. Like I'm someone who likes the t- anybody. I'm someone who yeah, likes the TV it. movie and loves the TV movie, and a lot of people can consider that to be one of the worst pieces of Doctor Who ever made. It's so subjective. If the fact that somebody could be offended at you for liking the TV movie is boggling, and it, when you compare it to, yeah. I guess everything else. I know. I think with me, like, the way I watch it to? Are you comparing it to Megalos? Or, or where do we set the bar? Exactly. Good planet of Giants? I went through the sort of um, classic who binge, sort of, like last year. And I kind of did it, I kind of approached it in the same way that I did Big Finish. I'll just pick the yeah. episodes that look cool. <laughs> I ended up watching Invasion of Time. Don't don't talk to me about Invasion of Time. It's one of the worst things, yeah, in my opinion. It's dreadful it is so it is bad I couldn't even finish it I don't even think I got to the Sontarans but I just <laughs> good it, it takes a nosedive from there as well what from the Sontarans bit it gets yeah. worse even the after that the next episode is walking around school gyms oh yeah I've, I've seen it. the clips of it of them like being like oh we appear to be in the same corridor again <laughs> Having a very tepid chase scene through the TARDIS. Wasn't yeah, part of that film in like a mental point. asylum as well? Oh, I. It looks like a sad school gym, but it wouldn't be. It wouldn't surprise me. I just heard somewhere that it was, you know, a mental. Oh, I don't know how accurate very, that is. Yeah. Know, was, if it was, that it's makes it, it even sort of weirder. But, yeah. but you could still get a massive laugh out of Invasion of Time. You could still, in the right sense... If I was really right drunk or something, I probably it's, could. Yeah, or you just even just want to take the piss out of it a bit. But, uh, Doctor Who serves all of these purposes because it's not modern TV and it was always punching a bit above its weight, mm. which puts it in this nice sweet spot where there isn't a consensus on what's good and what of it is bad, and there shouldn't be. I just think, like, but, um, as someone who, like, yeah, thought, like, Sontarans and Time Lords in the same story. Yeah, Sign man, me it's up. so lame. And it's so And bad. they all get done a disservice. They all get done a disservice. Yeah, the Time Lords have never been more boring, in my opinion, in that story. Yeah. It should be the Sontarans. We're being attacked point. by Tinfoil. <laughs> I suggest oh we have a long discussion about it. <laughs> no! Oh. Uh, I, d- oh, I do agree. My with favorite the Doctor Who line ever is in that story. What was that? Sorry, my fa- my favorite Doctor Who line ever is in the Invasion of Time. W- which one's that? Which one's that? Um, the guy Andred. He's talking to K9, and K 9s doing something important on the computer, and he just turns to camera slowly and says, "If I had a dog like you in my unit, I'd make him a sergeant." And it just holds on him for like seven seconds. And then the story continues, and it's like, wh- hey, what was that about? <laughs> that was a weird thing to say. Just <laughs> absolute nonsense. Yeah. So yeah, there's no criteria. There's no criteria. Where would you begin and end? I'm not sure what my favourite classic who line is. Maybe I haven't absorbed. You know, I've got some for a fair amount, but I know whether I have like a favourite line. Anything from Sil. Anything from Sil. I think that's a strong <laughs> I love that little green dude. They see to it hard oh, as well as it's locked. Oh. <laughs> He's got a golden tongue. Man, he, can, he can say and do no wrong. He cannot. Also, like, there are certain villains though that I just never want to see come back because they do it so hard. Like, still, I kind of want to see come back, but I also don't at the same time because I don't want to ruin him. Yeah. But at the same I mean, we've got Sill and the the Devil Seeds of Agador. Or I haven't it's seen called. it yet. I want to, but I don't no. know. Where do I get it? Is it Blu-ray? <laughs> Ask Jeremy Corbyn for his copy. He's got that at home on his on his shelf. Hey, Jeremy Corbyn, I know you're not busy right now, so uh, <laughs> any chance? I know you're probably watching the Sill the Sill short film, but uh, can I borrow it? Can I borrow it? <laughs> I'll make a little video on it. You know. <sighs> so funny and now I, I'll have to be very desperate to get around to seal on the devil scenes or yeah me too whatever. I mean to be fair as someone who covers the new stuff and there's no new stuff right now I might, I might get to that point <laughs> <laughs> just throw him a curveball just throw him an absolute curveball I you know I was thinking like for doing I, I saw this thing the, the, the other day that was I don't know whether you watch Who Chaser but he did a video uh, I must have seen on it, yeah. six doctor costumes like ranking them and he okay. mentions this costume from like the stage play and I'm like I've okay. never heard of the stage play before I watch it it's genuinely one of the most bizarre things I've ever watched in a good way yeah. it's, it's Colin Baker's wearing question marks isn't he 
Uh, Col yeah, Colin Baker's wearing quite a smart because he's got like a different yeah. outfit that's like more burgundy. <laughs> it's it's very it's very strange. But it's yeah. I, I I kinda love it though. Like the compa the companions are weirdly cool. Like cause one of them's like get around to one it. of them's like a French swordsman, it's like it's it's, it's very wow. he's basically the puss in boots of the Doctor Who universe. <laughs> um, okay. And I, I kind of dig it. <laughs> hey, look, I've got to do fifty of these black, black, uh, black cannons. Black cannon. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> a part of Black History Month. Oh god! Uh, I was just going to say it's the Black Guardians cannon. <laughs> <laughs> There's sadly too much of that. No, um, I've got to do fifty more of these videos. I will get round to this the goddamn stage plays uh, eventually. Oh, Is that how many you're going to do? Fifty. Um, <sighs> man because here's the thing my, my entire youtube output it's half hobby it's half uh, fandom as hobby and it's half crippling ocd <laughs> where the ocd brain gets to take over and make all these thumbnails and then i'm left here like like a dickhead and i've got to actually make them yeah that's that's i uh, that's, I, I do that all the time i make like 15 thumbnails in yeah. advance and I never <laughs> make them. <laughs> Cause photoshop I, is the fun part yeah no, that, I agree. Like, I'm, I'm in that phase now where I'm obviously, despite my, my me being considered a, you know, Chibnall channel, you know, one of those ones that sort of came around with Chibnall. Um, mm -hmm. Like, I haven't actually done in-depth reviews of each episode, like properly breaking them down, uh, and yeah. that's what I'm working on at the minute. That's like my big main focus, and then I've also got other focuses like. I, I want to do some more in-universe stuff because I did this thing called uh, How to Pilot the TARDIS entirely in-universe based predominantly off of the the manual that the BBC released. I don't know whether you've, oh, yeah. you've seen that book. Yeah, yeah. But it's predominantly based off that. into a black hole, into a supernova. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's about as accurate as like I could possibly make it. It's based off that and like the TARDIS index files or something, which was a site online that oh talks, tells you how to yeah, pilot yeah, yeah, the TARDIS. Yeah, yeah. I, I went Pretty way on board with like research on that to the extent, right, that I, I my name in that you know sort of fictional thing is the Scribe, which is actually my name in Gallifreyan apparently. Um, nice. And if you wait, hang on. How how does that translate? May I ask? <laughs> no idea. It's just my name. Because <laughs> um, like, I just it had to stop for a second and go. That's not a real language. <laughs> yeah, I have no idea how it works, but apparently I like it. my it's Time good. Lord name is the scribe, and I also, it's on the right. thumbnail, you'll see some, like, Gallifreyan, like, writing on it, and that actually spells out how to pilot the TARDIS in Gallifreyan as well. So That's really cool. I went way too overboard with the research on that, but I, I, I'm kind of happy with it at the same time. Well, I want to do more stuff like that, but, like, in a data log sort of format, so it'll be, like, yeah. in the same sort of style, but, like... Do you know like how the Sarah Jane Adventures had like a Monster Files thing? I loved the Monster Files. I basically yeah. want to do that, um, but obviously in universe as like the, you know the Time Lord's guide to all the different monsters. Um, mm. So that's another sort of thing I want to do as well. I got so many ideas for like big projects. It's just trying to get to do them. And obviously an audio series as well, just to give myself a bit more stuff to do with the channel. You know. Oh yeah, yeah. Always keep yourself sharp. Yeah. Use Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy music for the for the data logs. That'd be great fun. Ooh, interesting. I'll have to take a look. I haven't actually Ooh. read Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Ooh. I probably should. Ooh. Or watch it. So, so I've got a suggestion. Just gonna make a crazy, unrelated recommendation. Mm -hmm. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. <laughs> it's amazing. I will do. Isn't it made? Is wasn't it written by? Mr. Adams. It was. Yes. yes. It was. Yes. The script editor and uh, Shardaman. Shardaman. The Shardaman. 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 He does whatever a Shardaman can. No, he, he's, he's absolutely excellent, and he did all of his great stuff working on Who and around that time period. Yeah. But, uh, no, the the way that they do the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Maybe you can find a clip of it online. Trust me, that that will go. That'll go quite far. Cool. I'll t definitely take a look at that. Big big sci-fi encyclopedia. Yeah. Mm. I will, I will definitely for sure take it. I know about, like, is Marvin the Paranoid Android? Yeah, this guy? yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's him. That's him. I am very depressed. Yeah. <laughs> I relate too much to Marvin. No, I'm going to finish that. Yeah. No, um, what was I going to say? Yeah, no, I got a bunch of projects, but I think we're in the same boat where we, like, 
make thumbnails before we actually have an idea of what to do with them. Um, Massively. Um, and uh, it's more that I got like a really nice reception to this. That's uh, I was only going to... I don't know what I was doing in lockdown. My mind was just all roaming. But then, uh, yeah, suddenly all my comments got really nice out of nowhere. Um, so <laughs> what is this? this series, I'm not used to praise. Right? Get away. I cracked the Matrix. So if this is a good way to filter out gatekeepers and, like... Daily Mail di- diatribe speakers and not my doctors, the, the Nimids, then I'm going to keep doing it. Why does, Even why if does it the does, n- like, why does uh, the Nimids... turn my channel into a niche, you know? Yeah. I don't think there's any upward... Any, uh, yeah, but any, I think that's why I like upward. your channel, though, because it's so detached from all of the... You know, again, Hootubers. I hate the... Oh, the Hootubers don't... You're the first person who's ever come out to me. They don't... They, they ignore me. <laughs> I mean, I think... Well, I, I mean, I'm an outlier in the community as well, so maybe that's why... <laughs> maybe that's why we, we worked. Because, like, I don't know. We'll take them down. We'll take them down. We'll take them all down. <laughs> we shall rise. We shall make obscure videos. Jeez, and not. Very this con- is the opposite of networking. This is bad networking. This- <laughs> I mean, to be fair, I got you on the podcast, didn't I? So, oh yeah, well, is, I it, do, I is it good network in that way? You know, <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, yeah, but the, I just declared war on every YouTuber. So, uh, where does that leave us? I mean, as co-hosts, <laughs> <laughs> which is like um, <laughs> us against the universe oh, because they made a because I watched the new Phineas and Ferb movie that's Candace against the universe. It's, it's Samuel, Samuel slash diaries against the universe. <laughs> I don't know. That's the title of that movie. But, uh, oh, it's a shame as well because I like all the other YouTubers. I don't want to fight them in a war. No, no, no. I don't. Well, no, I don't think I want to do that. Right, well, well. Well, I mean that Harbour guy. Yeah, they said about him. About <laughs> <laughs> wrong and wrong. Absolutely wrong. I'm kidding, Harbour. <laughs> Because we're good friends. I'm not. I actually remember when he was smaller than me as well, which is kind of baffling. He blew up recently. The power to him. He's a great guy. Very nice. No, no. Uh, I don't, I'm not going to recommend anything of mine. I'm just going to recommend some other Hootubers. Um, that because there are so many who are off people's radars, mm. despite being quite big. That's what I try and do. I try and like direct people towards what I see to be underrated, you know, channels. Yeah. Or even quite big ones, which are still somehow underrated for some circles, because who fandom is so much bigger than we actually give it credit for. Mm. It is massive. Well, I mean, there's a reason there's been such an explosion in, you know, quote unquote, YouTubers recently as yeah, well. Yeah, right? time. There are a big lot time. of them. Oh, that... Hey, at Asda, big finish released of vinyl at Asda. And they've just been bought up immediately overnight by the general public. I mean, so, to get people in Asda, to get people in Asda, that's that's <laughs> quite an achievement. <laughs> yeah. I'm just more of a Tesco man. Well, I can't help it. I'm just saying we're about the place. Yeah, no, <laughs> no. So, um, I, I, I kind of love that though. Blow any mind. Oh, sorry, go go. No, I kind of love that though. That there's so many of us, and like yeah. everyone occupies yeah. their little slice of the pie. Like uh, I, we're not a niche fandom. We are not a niche fandom. It's very strange. No, it's it's weird. Um, like I went on a podcast, and like someone says, well, "How does it feel to be part of the Hoochie community?" And I'm like, "I'm part of the Hoochie community." Oh shit! Yeah, I guess I am. <laughs> There's a community. <laughs> well, no, it's not that I necessarily didn't know that there was one. It's just that I never considered myself part of it because I grew up being a oh, fan of that community. To me. It's still news to me. It's still news to me. I, I mean, yeah, you would be so. considered more more of a part of it than I would be, for sure. I mean... Jesus, really? I would assume so, going off numbers and stuff. Ugh. <laughs> well, number one, we're not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wish people would reach out more. I really do wish people would reach out more. Do they not? Uh, that surprises me. No, no, not at all. Because you all. seem like one of those people that would be an interesting podcast guest. You literally thought that Doctor Who was about a talking frog. Aye. It's like... <laughs> you know, it's, I think you, you're an interesting podcast because I don't know. <laughs> Absolute flattery. It's this. This is the reason why I am a special guest. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe everyone's a special guest, so I don't feel quite so special. No, no, some are more special than others. Some are more special. <laughs> <laughs> true, true. I mean, God, the impression I'm making. This is why. <laughs> Bad jokes like that that other people don't want to collab. Um, <laughs> I, mean, I guess I'm just equally as bad with jokes, which is probably why. Yeah. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> 
Who's, who's there to recommend? Uh, I mean, it'll blow no one's mind to recommend Stu Barrack for all. He's oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, he was on another um, episode of this podcast. Oh, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll dig that one So, you, so you're in good company, actually, on this podcast. There's some good people yeah. on this one. We got nitpicks on here. That's the biggest guest so far. Oh, yeah, okay. Ooh. Yeah. So that's a get? Mm. I, I was very it's surprised how, how, like, chilled they were with doing it. Because, like, yeah. th- there's a funny, like, story behind that was we, like, met in a group chat that we were at, we were both added to, which, for starters, the fact that I was thought of in the same breath as nitpicks is kind of baffling, but also, like, <laughs> it was, it worked out really well because we ended up organising the podcast from that. I hope they're doing alright as well, I haven't, haven't heard from them in a while, I know they released that Lion King video, but, um, who would I recommend? Um, I think is I try and like to recommend people who are sort of smaller. Um, in scale, mm. but like have a lot of time. I would recommend. I would recommend obviously, Tyler Hoovians, they've recently hit 1k. They're like a group channel, so they kind of harken back to that sort of five who fans type deal, but it's more. It's kind of. They're kind of a combination between the two, like five who fans and the who Alex as well. That's the thing, we don't have that many group channels anymore because five who fans left. But yeah, so that's why I recommend them. God, they they were they're very much a throwback from early YouTube. I know. Like I, I think I, I had a vlogging one back in the day. <laughs> that was. Uh, but I literally remember because obviously I started watching Who in like 2013, and back then it was literally five Who fans, Who addicts, Dimmy, and that was about it. Like those were the only people I knew about, um, and maybe like well. I was aware of Trilby as well. I didn't. Really, I think he was a bit too intellectual for my like child brain. But then, um, yeah. Oh, and and oh, Tardis Archives. Hail Tardis Archives. We miss you. Um, I've got to make it clear because I am that little bit older. I'm of a slight half generation ahead. Is Babel Color still a name that people know? I know of Babel Color. I don't know whether it, is he still around. Oh, my God, what the YouTube. Doctor Who channel. Oh my god, he's brilliant. Cut. He's not making regular stuff. He's more into like color restorations these days, but uh, an old archive footage. Just mm, beautiful early internet stuff right there. Oh, I don't think I have. So, wait, I know I know the name. I just don't think I've watched much of his. Oh, he's like old school. Old school. Mm. There's also Clever Dick Films. Oh. He just does these brilliant, brilliant documentaries that are so good. An- like, another podcast you- guest. I'll just say I got that. Yeah. Oh my god. Really. Yeah. I, 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 Whoa. I get everyone, man. This. This is great. You know, it's. Can you send on a compliment from me? <laughs> Clever Dick's is brilliant. You think you'll know everything about the production, and then you just learn like ten new things. And it's so well made as well. Like it literally, they, the BBC could release them. And no one would bat an eye. Like, it's not even DVD extras better than the actual ones, big time. Yeah, no, for sure. Like, and also there's uh, Papa Rainer. Papa Rainer's. Mm. He, he sort of goes through the Virgin New Adventures novels in a Ooh, just as professional way. He Papa Rainer's brilliant. I have to. P O. If you can send me the link to that, because I don't know how to spell that. But yeah, you have to send me the. Yeah, link. I'm struggling. I'm struggling. I think it's P O P A R E N A. Yeah. Excellent stuff. He does goosebumps as well, but uh, I'm just here for that yeah, angsty yeah, Doctor Who material. I'll see if I can grab it. Boom! I got to think of other Networking. podcasts. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, to be honest, like a lot of people ask me, you know, how do you get so many people on your podcast? And I'm just like, I just ask them. <laughs> yeah, we're just a bunch of. <laughs> cool dudes with a hobby in common. It's great. Yeah. It's great. No, like, like everyone that I've had on the podcast has been like super chill. Like, I haven't had. Cause you, you know that there's like some people who like there's the stereotypical like quote unquote big YouTuber who's like only two thousand subscribers. Oh Get away. Oh, give, give names. <laughs> give us some names. <laughs> no, I'm not saying that there are any, but like that's what I mean. <laughs> there's a stereotype of big YouTubers that is that. You know, but like, I've never had that interaction with any of any of the ones that I've had on the show. Hmm. If you can call it a show, it's basically just me talking while you know my parents do the dishes. No, <laughs> <laughs> bring them on, bring them on. <laughs> Don't do that. No, yeah. Anyway, I th- I like the idea as podcasts as uh, digital pubs. If there was a pub, we could all go to. If, if pubs were a thing right now, yeah. a responsible thing. Then we would all do that in a in a pub, but 
we don't all have a pub in common, so... No. Can you so imagine you do it on YouTube every podcast. YouTuber in a pub? Ooh, maybe not. Maybe that actually... You say it like that and suddenly I feel threatened. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just like the idea of... Do you know how, like, in high school, you've got different groups? I imagine, like, all the YouTubers in a, in a high school together. Oh my God, they're all got their little, am I in? They've all got no. their... No! You'd be in, like... Probably, no, uh, dude. I don't know which one you'd be in, actually. Do You're to hard me. to categorise, to be fair. I'm the, I'm the, doc, I'm the very weird niche, Doctor Who exhibition. I'm in that group. Yeah. That's in at the back. I, I really like the Doctor Who exhibitions of the 2000s more than the TV show. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Only we're great. I went to all of them. I, Land's yeah. End. I don't remember I'm that one. But, Cardiff. I'm talking Brighton. But I did go so to I'm the one that's now a Five Guys. And I also went to yeah, the one. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I was in there. It, was, yeah. it played the Doctor Who theme song on loop. Yeah. Back in 2005. It was I tell you what, I did go to as well. There was a, I, I don't think it was called Music and Monsters. I think it was called something else. But it was one they did for, like, early Matt Smith. And it was this guy who had a Vortex manipulator and was trying to, like, exhibit all of the Doctor's enemies. And it was really good. Um, uh, oh, and I have, yeah, I have a lot of nostalgia nice. because... When I when I needed the toilet, they sort of followed us. <laughs> not all the way. Um. <laughs> not all the hey way, on. but like you know, they was just, they were it was so good. They were so like in character. That's like magical for like a. a okay, kid. good. Uh, as long as it was a magical. Experience, no. not another kind. It was of it was it was okay, a smiler good, good, good. I think as well. Not like the. It was what before they turned their heads around though. So like you got like the evil side on one side and then the normal side. It was normal side. Ah. Yeah. Um, oh, I, I missed out on them because uh, I sort of fell out of Doctor Who for a little bit so I didn't go to the later Matt Smith exhibitions even though from what I've seen on YouTube there are some crazy ones around the country mm, like yeah. loads of mental stuff I never got to see but uh, everything in the Davis years I was you know I was, was going to exhibitions around the country there's one the one in Land's End may I just <clears throat> you go down this bunker because it's built on a marine base and as you go down this very real stone staircase by yourself, no music or no exhibits, a Dalek just rises and the music starts. <laughs> and it's shouting at you. And I think I'd be scared by that right now as yeah. an adult. But there's also that bit in, in um, I remember similarly in Doctor Who experience, like they had the bit where you go to Scar and all the Daleks are asleep <laughs> and you put the crystal in and they all start waking up. That's so cool. You know, stuff yeah, like man, that. It's just... I had crying kids at that bit, and I don't blame them. That was way too intimidating for children. Yeah, because Dalek voices aren't exactly quiet either. So if they're like... And Daleks are imposing in real life. <laughs> yeah. Everyone jokes about them, but hey, if you have a malicious tank coming towards you, no. Especially if it was like Especially a paradigm as well. Can you imagine seeing a paradigm Dalek in real life? You'd be terrified. Not fun. <laughs> Any kind of Dalek past the 1980s would be scary I mean uh, I, yeah. I think though even the 1980s had like the special weapons darling and I don't want to be on the wrong end of the special yeah, weapons I, I could chill with that dude I could hang out with that guy <laughs> <You> right? <laughs> he's cool with my books fair enough you can never see where he's going they just bring him along and he just goes I'm strumming eh? <laughs> and he just blows up a score or something. He's great. He's great fun. <laughs> great fun blows. Great fun blows up a school. <laughs> Davis twenty twenty. <laughs> I love the Daleks with the dodgy voices. Can we get that back in Doctor Who? Can Nicholas Briggs just do a Dalek who sounds like this? Yeah, the best who sounds ones? like they're gargling like <laughs> like marbles. <laughs> like, are you okay? Are you, dude, the doctor just stops. Are you alright? Is everything good? No. no. I, <laughs> I just have nervous. something in my throat. <laughs> He's just really anxious. He's really anxious. Doctor, it's an honour to meet you on my first day. It's like that channel. What's that channel? Oh, I recommend them. There's a guy who does Dalek like skits, and he voices all the Daleks. It's hilarious. He did the Iron Dalek thing. Have you seen that? No. Oh, hang on. Ah, oh, where is it? Wait. Mr. Capaldi, I am a big fan. Uh, oh. Dalek. Aha! Wait, no. Not aha. It, it didn't come up. Okay, I might have, I might have searched that one. Hang on, I know, I know what to find. I'll find a search of Iron Dalek. I can find the video. Iron Dalek. 
because he basically did like an, an Iron Man parody with Resolution. It's it's so good. It's so good. But he does like other ones where like the Daleks open up a cafe. But it's literally just okay. a scene from the Daleks, and they're like, obviously the the, the the original crew come in, and they're like, table for four, I presume, this way. <laughs> it's a bridge to Doctor Who, it's an abridged Doctor Who series, love it, love it. Yeah, basically, cool. it's so good. Um, this is, I, I found it now, it's this channel, uh, it's, it's, it's fantastic. I'll put it in the link for you, to, I found the, the channel, so I'll put that in there. He's like, genuinely... If, if, if Nick Briggs, God rest, you know, if he, I wouldn't want this to happen, but if he passed away... Oh my God. <laughs> if he passed away, they'd have to get this guy, because he's just, he can just do all the Daleks, and he can, you know, like, make them all feel unique and distinct. He did the Bitch Fight of Canary Wharf. That guy. Oh, okay. I know the Bitch Fight of Canary Wharf. I should have said that guy. That would have made more sense. But yeah, he did that. And he's done, like, a bunch That's of other things. That's a deep dive. That's also quite old. Yeah, but he's done like a bunch yeah, of other synths as well. The classics stick around. Cool. Yeah, he's still around. Uh, he did a video on the Edge of Time thing, so he's still around. Boom. Uh, Joey V. Joey V. Viz, if you're watching this, I doubt you are, but podcast hit me up <laughs> next episode. Because <laughs> that's the thing. I only like to like do these ones if like I can get interesting enough people to to carry it. <laughs> um, I think you definitely fit that bill. I, I would say. Anyway. The other guy, not show up. <laughs> the other guy. <laughs> well, I mean, we already crowned you official co-host, so... Is there... I mean, what I did mostly was shout over you and uh, talk about um, ca- canon as a literary concept. I was... So, I don't know how that's going to go down. I, I, I think that works just fine. We balance each other out. You know, one person talks about the boring new stuff, i.e. me. Uh, yeah, and one person talks about the obscure stuff that no one cares about. Oh. <laughs> we, I'll have you know, the stage play <laughs> the stage. <laughs> it's a, is a gem. Uh, I, mean, I mean, I say no one cares about it. Like, you've managed to make the obscure parts of Doctor Who incredibly popular. Kind of in the same way that, like, you can only get views on Classic Who stuff if you're Josh Nares. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's good too. He's a good egg. He is a good egg. I'd love to get him on as well. He's, I, to be honest, though, it's like I'm running out of people I genuinely want to get onto the channel. Like a lot of my bucket list items have already sort of been <laughs> fulfilled. You know, like Cleverick Films, he was definitely one. Netflix was definitely one. Chow Pub as well. I'm good friends with him now. It's, 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 I'm running out of running out of options. You have to get Mr. Chibnall. Mr. Chibnall. There's nothing else for it. There's nothing else for it. Yeah. <laughs> I just go on if they if they if they make BBC what what's what, what's the thing he complained on again what's it called oh yeah where well, he was going off at Pip and Jane Baker to yeah yeah pieces. if Ugh. they make that again eighties just... Doctor Who fans it's what I'm telling you no self awareness I'll just go on it <laughs> <laughs> I I thought Mr Chibnall's um I thought his output was contrived and unoriginal <laughs> and I would like it's to like, discuss on, this man. further on an episode of my <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Stop pushing all these tropes, man. These stereotypes are clearly correct. Yeah. Uh, it's, 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 um, it's quite funny. I like to hope we're a bit beyond that now. <laughs> yeah. What's it? Yeah, I don't know what it's called, that show. That they, is it Open Air? I don't know. BBC yeah, Open Air or something like that? Maybe. Maybe. I, I don't remember. I have seen they should bring it back and just get all the Doctor Who fans on the complete. <laughs> no, it's actually just Chris again. It's just Chris back in his little suit. It's, just, it's just Chris complaining at Chris. Chris complaining at you. <laughs> the meta Chris. The meta Chris is... The Meta Christmas. Yes. 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 <laughs> Someone make that a thing. Please. You guys are good at Twitter stuff. Make the Meta Christmas. BBC Wales make it. Anyone. Big finish. We want a five part <laughs> box set. The Meta Christmas. It's literally just an alternate Chris. Who's still. Christmas. Christmas. Meta Christmas. That's really, really good. I don't know what, why I came up with that. Everyone just spam the comments with Meta Christmas when this comes out. Metacrisis. That's, that's all I want to see. I don't want to see anything else. Just Metacrisis. <laughs> what is this podcast, man? <laughs> uh, it definitely has devolved over the last... Um, ooh, two hours. Oh, okay. Oh, my God. Is it been two hours? Oh, 
sugar. You may have to edit me. I do go on a bit. Nah, that's fine. I don't edit podcasts mainly because A, it's my break from editing. B, <laughs> and B, I think, like, the tangents of what you come to podcasts for. You know, that's, Beautiful. You know, they're going yeah. down the rabbit hole. It's kind of what's the fun part about podcasts, in my opinion. Um, oh, that's true. And you're always getting us and you're always getting me, at least, in jump cuts. So... Mm. If anyone listens to us and go, oh god, that guy is a twat. You can just skip then, forward. Yeah, go to the next one. Go to um, Council of Geeks. Go to their video. No, no don't go <laughs> to their podcast. Stick with this one. It'll be good eventually, I promise. <laughs> don't leave. No. Nah, that's okay. You can leave this one. No. <laughs> My audience is like zero subscribers. Everyone just leaves. Oh, no, no, no. I mean your podcast and like the next episode you get them on or something. Oh, right, yeah. Like you, can skip, you can skip the Davis one, trust me. He, nah, I like this one. Absolute mania. I like it. I'll probably yeah. premiere this as well because I, I normally do that with podcasts where you do a premiere thing. Because uh, oh, they're long. Um, and you know, I love premieres. I love premieres because that's where you get the, the real fandom part of it. It's like, yeah. It feels like a live message board, like the old days. The only thing I don't like about it is that like you can't really customize it that much. Like you've always got to listen to the same like two minute, what you call it, like the thing, the countdown thing. That's like. Oh yeah. That do, 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 that's yeah, that I'm at my happiest when that countdown's going. <laughs> yeah. It does. It does build a sense of anticipation. To be fair, so I, I will give it that. Um, but yeah, that's good. I do love this sometimes. Do you find it weird? Like if you ever go into a premiere and you say something, or you go into a comment section and you say something, and everyone's like, and like there's always, there's always one person who's like, I know you from 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 from, from channel, and I'm like, yes, that is me from channel. Hello. <laughs> does that does that never happen to you? Before? I don't think so. No. Really? Because I don't. Because I don't really appear on other people's channels. I tell you what, just comment on this one, and I'll or comment anywhere on YouTube, and I'll just find it and be like, "Oh, my God, Davis from the Tharys podcast." <laughs> <laughs> oh, look cool. As if that's yeah, your no, crowning. I like that. That puts my mind. As if your crowning achievement is the podcast. <laughs> not man. Not, not, sure. Have you seen? <laughs> compared to everything else that's happened this year, I'll take it. I mean, this is literally just us talking for, for three hours, which, to be fair, could be someone's, like, oh, my God, this could be, like, the majority of somebody's day if they watch the whole thing. <laughs> like, <laughs> I like that person. I like that person a lot. Some people do watch these to the end, though, and I'm like, you have more patience than I would. I love them. Uh, Absolutely love them. Uh, oh, sorry, I should have started with this, actually. Um, I think I'll sign off with a recommendation for anyone who else who's got this far, A, and B... Uh, makes who videos or even if you don't make who videos I've been involved in this other fan project just this week Ooh. set up by uh, a Lord Voldemort Lord Paul Demort oh I'm in that as well yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm in it as well yeah. we should have opened up with this we should have said this. this yes good can point can you maybe put it in the description or something I don't know I don't know but I'm trying to get more people to it yeah that's good it's point it's such a nice little project that, it's um in the same vein as those uh, Marvel one perfect scenes that yeah one marvelous oh no one uh, one X was what was it I know there's one excellent yeah that's for X Men isn't it one excellent it was people talking about their favorite X Men scenes and doing a little tiny video essay it doesn't even have to be that and um, we've all been picking different Ninth Doctor stories and moments to cover um, in celebration for Mr Eccleston joining us back and both of us are taking part in it. Put your money on... What scene have you done? Put... What scene are you covering? What was that? Oh, what scene am what I covering? You... Am I allowed to say? Yeah, yeah, we can say what we scene can say. we're doing. Alright, I'm doing the scene in the end of the world where the Doctor and Rose <gasps> argue about... Oh, um, what's the exact scene where they're like, this is who I am, right here, right now. All that matters now is, he, is, is here and now, and this is me, that bit. That, that argument, that's what I'm doing. That's beautiful. Which I think is a really I interesting almost... scene. Um, it's, it's a good one and I'll, I'll, I don't know the exact timestamp you're thinking of so I'll be double excited to like have it burned into my brain a bit yeah I'll be going right into depth because there's a lot of fun things in that scene that I think really exemplify just how special RTD era sort of who is and like yeah, the stuff exactly. that they put into it it's just <sighs> mine is also about establishing the show like putting putting the groundwork in yeah no exactly and then World War Three, the final scene where they're about to take off, and it's more about Mickey turning down travelling in the TARDIS. Oh, yeah. A tiny moment that he shares with the Ninth Doctor where they actually 
we have some mutual respect. Yeah. And then there's when Rose leaves the TARDIS. Which then? Everybody in that scene except Rose knows that what's happening is hypocritical and dangerous. Mm. Rose is like the only person in the scene who's not in on it. Which I find interesting. Mm. But uh, mm. yeah, I'll be super excited to see yours. I'll I'll be I almost to see yours. did the scene at the end of End of the World, you know, the chips. Yeah, I wanted that one. <laughs> but I mean, a lot, uh, you know, I think someone snapped that up relatively quickly. Um, ah, someone took it. I could have had that. I was, I was early in it. But yeah, I but I, I'm happy with my scene. It's quite a good scene. Uh, I, have... I didn't have anything to say other than just like bab, like emotional babbling. Like how beautiful it is. I would have just been fan. I mean, that's all. Like, that's all you need. Um, yeah. That's, uh, yeah. Actually, that's all, hang on. That's all you would have well, needed. What is this video except that? What was that? What, what I mean, my video I've done isn't any different. Any isn't isn't anything but fanboy babbling. So yeah, that's true. I mean, my one. I feel like I haven't started it yet. I know you've like finished yours. Um, and I did mine in two hours, man. I, it's that OCD again. Yeah, I'm coming now. I'll make the video. Yeah, I need to do that actually. Um, that'll probably be the next video I work on. Right now, I'm working on that woman who fell to earth to review. Um, I'm not looking forward to the Rosa review because whatever I say is gonna the my, the comment section is just gonna be a minefield. Ah, uh, yeah, kind of a lose lose. Yeah, because like if I say that it's handled well, then there'll be people who are like, oh, you know. I think you gotta applaud its audacity more than yeah. anything else. Yeah, I think my my uh, my only like issue with it, I would say, is just like it lacks uh, like a lot of subtlety. And I mean, I know it's a lot to ask from Chibnall for a political thing to be subtle, but I mean, I don't know, it's, I don't think that... Honestly, I don't want any kind of politics from Chibnall because what I've seen from the man is questionable. Yeah. Let's not go there. Ironically, (laughs) the best way it's been implemented is Praxius, and that was half written by Chibnall, half written by somebody else. McTeague, I think. Yeah, I. But in my opinion, this is another controversial one. I think Praxis is worse than Orphan Fifty Five. Uh uh-uh. Sorry, not happening. Mm. Not happening. I won't stand for the slander. Slander, of Benny. The slander of Praxis. I loved Praxis. I've been waiting for a story to do that exact thing for so long, and uh, it was so funny. It was so funny, like genuinely funny. Nah, I just found it really boring though. So. Fair enough. Fair enough. I like Globe Trotter. The thing is with Orphan 55 for me is at least it's fun to watch. In the same way that, like, Fear Her is or something. I mean, I kind of like Fear Her, but that's... You get my point. It's like, it's one of those ones where it's not good. Fear Her is more competent than these other stories we're talking about, but it's not good. No. I mean, Praxius is competent, but not particularly interesting to me. Yeah, alright, fair enough. Oh, yeah. All 55 is, is I think, the behind the scenes would be twice as interesting as this one. Yeah. And that's well, not I, this is That's the trial of the Time Lord syndrome. What actually it's happened like to Doctor Who Confidential? Right? What actually happened to that? Oh, God. I, I mean, you could get into a bigger point how bonus features and behind the scene production details are being filtered out in general. Yeah, because I, I, I remember them saying. Physical media doesn't really exist anymore. But, uh, who made the yeah, point that, like. Chibnall doesn't give anything away either, like anymore. No, like he doesn't. He doesn't want people to see the behind the scenes. So whatever we do see behind the scenes is usually Mandip Jill being adorable and giving us like a tiny little, but still quite artificial look behind the scenes. Yeah, because they have like, them doing like challenges now, don't they? Yeah, I, I know that Confidential was like an actual production, a piece of edited TV. But it still felt more genuine than some of these like little set vlog things. Yeah, because they do like um, Jody versus Manda. Don't know, was like they eat marshmallows and see who wins and stuff. I've yeah, seen that. I've also seen Manda just wandering around the set from uh, Fugitive, and uh, not really going into any detail other than just being there. Nah. Adorable, yeah. yeah. I mean, Manda Gill's just great. So yeah. I'll just watch I, her being I, I do kind of feel I'm sorry about vlog. Manda Gill. In terms of like how little she's given, <laughs> because in certain scenes it's really obvious that she can act. Like particularly in the bit in Spyfall, where she talks about being in the Kasaban dimension, yeah, and she's she gets that random moment of trauma, and then nothing. Like else. it's obvious she can act. Toes and Cole, on the other hand, he doesn't seem to emote, but. 
I like him. I like him plenty. I like him a lot. He might be good in other things. Maybe we'll see his acting ability in other things because I know he's signed on to that that American show now, isn't he? Why is it? I don't know what it's called, but it's with Michael B. Jordan. He signed on to like an American cop oh, yeah, show thing, um, which is oh, probably why he's leaving at the end of the Christmas special, presumably. Honestly, probably good for him. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Bradley yeah, Walsh is just Bradley Walsh, and he'll just sort of exist forever. Yeah, he's on the chase, isn't he, geezer? He's on the chase, uh, isn't he? Uh, yeah, he's on the chase. <laughs> There's the... I like all three. I like all three companions, even though they don't really do anything with them. Uh, the, the times in this show where they you, you asked earlier what I'd like to see since Series 13, yeah, yeah. number one is more because the few times we have seen them try something, like when Yaz ran away from home and had an implied suicide subplot. Mm. Uh, Jesus Christ, that's brilliant. But what? Where has that been? Yeah, where's that been? That's my argument. It's like, why yeah. wasn't that implemented sooner? The, I watched Woman Who Fell to Earth the other day for uh, the, the anime mashups I make. And, yeah, and obviously I'd add to as well for the review, so we should have yeah. relatively good oh, grasp on it. Basically, I got, really, um, I got really invested in the tone of Series 11, that early tone mm. surrounding Grace and everything. The episodes and the execution, yeah, debatable whether they did that. Well. I was really surprised, actually, by how much conflict Graham and Ryan had in that initial episode. Because there's like... Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It does make you realise they came quite far, just not very organic. No, it's like, it's literally... In that first episode, there's a line where Graham's like, I suppose you're going to believe this on your dyspraxia as well. And it's like, there's genuine conflict there. And then by Ghost on you, they're all friendly, and it's like, well, rough, isn't it? Yeah. that was just a waste. It's just a waste yeah. of, of, of an arc. Because I, I know so they did... There's so much potential, man, in, in early Series 11. There's so much potential. Uh, not just the Doctor and Capaldi's final parting words, which, by the way, is the perfect starting point for a Doctor, but also in the Companions. Yeah. And, uh, Ryan, there's a scene where Ryan's trying to learn the bike. And learn the bike. Learn the ways of the bike. <laughs> <laughs> whilst, whilst you were watching Doctor Who, I was learning the ways of the, the bike. <laughs> the, the I was way. mastering the blade. That's why you should have called um, it the ways of the bike. That's going to be what the episode's called. <laughs> <laughs> but um, that scene where 13 is just watching Ryan uh, struggle on the bike is better than anything we've gotten from her doctor. Yeah. Because then, in effect, her doctor does adopt Ryan. And we've never really addressed that. What? How? Or is that just how? How he's that basically a de facto mum type figure. Yeah, yeah, totally. Uh, he's still young enough to need a home, and at this point, he's being given an alternative. Mm. And uh, yeah, he completely got taken in, and we've just never returned to that dynamic. It would be cool like actually to explore it. the Doctor's more parental instincts, and maybe have that be a result of that. Clara. <laughs> Can Miss Clara Oswald? Oh no! That's, that, that's only what I can assume your dreaded series nine tried to do, huh? It didn't do it well. <laughs> Yo, oh, there, there we go again. Mm, Those spicy. wrong opinions. No, but spoilers for that. What would you felt to this video? This is why it'll come out. This this will probably come out after that video is released because otherwise, it's just gonna ruin that really good bit. Basically, my ending point is the woman who fell to earth provides a solid enough base for a good series of Doctor Who to build off of but the problem is it just never did do that in my opinion yeah, or it didn't build on it enough essentially yeah. that's, my main issue. that's my main issue yeah absolutely it, it was a kind of uh, you know how Russell had series openers which were kind of fluff but they did their job yeah they served a purpose partners in crime get to you on board and it's fun he is Donna tonally his series 4 Woman Who Fell to Earth kind of did do that it, it, it was a Russell opener and it was good yeah was amazing but it, it then just didn't continue to do its job I think if I had to give an arbitrary review score um, because I didn't do that in the video I was pl I was thinking about doing it I'd probably give it a 6 out of 10 it's, yeah same, same it's, exactly. it's like slightly above average the plot is nonsense but yeah that's the thing I don't know why it had to be so complicated it. Uh, yeah, well, okay, uh, yeah, we're agreed on that. It's like, but, yes, uh, we so need a tentacle man. <laughs> Why? And the tentacle thing is attached to this, but he's going after this character. Quick, everyone who I've just met, <laughs> let's, let's go. Exactly, just have Tim so t t Zimshaw trying to tilt, 
trying to kill Grace. That's all you needed for the story, and it would have worked fine. You don't need all these pods. That cut so many corners. That cut so many corners. You can cut every single thing where the egg was killing random people off screen. And the useless side characters that don't need to exist. There's people who discovered the the egg, the orb, but it didn't didn't have any part to play in the story. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Resolution does that. You know that awesome setup with the Dalek, where the knights take it out. Yeah. Yeah. They, that law that they spent all that time setting up doesn't have anything to do with the story. No, because they're even on the cover of the DVD as well, aren't they? And they like what never. What is happening? Yeah, exactly. What is happening over there in Cardiff? Chaos in Cardiff? Question mark? Question mark? <laughs> are, they, is Chris, are they still filming in Cardiff? I don't think they've started yet. Doctor Who, I said, I think they've started yet. Because normally you find out when they have. Uh, yeah. Because my, get around to I know someone who's actually an extra who was an extra in series twelve as well. Um, and yeah, he was very tight-lipped though. Couldn't get anything out of him, which is a shame. Because I could be one of the ones who ruined it for everyone. <laughs> you know what they've got? They've got him playing Omega. That's what they're doing. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Oh, man, that is strange. I'm, I'm sure I'll enjoy it whenever it comes. The next seven and a half episodes <laughs> and I'll probably enjoy two of them yes that's the status quo three of them have the Sasha Dewan master in them <laughs> and six of them contribute to the series arc oh god yay yay I, I mean I like the Sasha Dewan master so that I, I wouldn't be opposed yeah, to no, master. Like, Sasha master I, I really am not against anybody who likes this run it's just uh, well I don't like this run I just like nice certain way. parts like elements of it it just doesn't come together to form a cohesive whole. Yeah, boom. You, that's the, that's right out on the money. I'm always rooting for it, and I usually find those results in the comics and the novels. Mm. Fair. I think I'm going to wrap it up there, I think. Let's, let's. Will this come out before the 9th? Oh, yes, it will be out before then. Probably, I'm try, I'll am i try and get the... When am I going to try and get the... If I can get the, try and get the... the um, okay, let me think. I'm looking at my calendar. So if I get the, the review out for the Sunday or maybe the Monday, then I could get this out for the Tuesday and then the Wednesday would be the, the 9th. So so there'd still be time, hypothetically, for people to contribute to the Ninth Doctor project. I mean, if they could make a video in a day, I don't see why not. Maybe, hey, hey, maybe, maybe. If, if I'm just saying, if you wanted to, Lord Paul, as in Paul... Demont on Twitter, and uh, he'll be. I could put a link in the, the pin comment. Absolutely, he, he'll comment. be more than grateful for any for any interested eyes. Yes, good idea. I, I I actually didn't think about mentioning that until you. Until you brought it. Some big names involved in it. It's really nice to be for once involved in communal stuff. Yeah. Past just the echo chamber of my own comment section. <laughs> yeah, I like getting involved in like communal stuff though. I love doing stuff like that. Like if ever they, because <laughs> this is this is a little thing. Uh, I, Crispy Pro did a little um, YouTube rewind thing um, last year, which ironically is kind of better than YouTube rewind, but it doesn't take a lot. Um, <laughs> and it obviously. I, I thought this was such a cool idea and I really wanted to be in the, the next one. So I got I got my commenters to just say, can you put Thaddeus in the next one? Which is an abuse of power, I admit, but you know, I want to be in it. You'll never, I just, I'll never be asked to be in stuff like that, ever. Well, I'll force my way into it. I'll just be like, I'll just be like Sophie Aldrin, I'll just force my way into Doctor Who media, I'll force my way into YouTube collabs, I will be there. Leave Sophie alone. No, I like Sophie Aldrin, that's what I'm saying, but she, She's earned it. she has to like force herself into them. Yeah. In a good way though, like, not in a... Like me. Yes, and like me. Wow, wow. It's just, it all comes together. it's just occurred to me that like we're both just the sort of ones that no one wants to associate with. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of like that though. Kind of dig it. Cool. <laughs> but yeah, I think that about wraps it up. Is there anything you want to plug? Before uh, we... No, we've already done the other YouTubers. Uh, I'm always doing Broke Cannon, I guess. Sub to Davis. Davis. I guess. Don't have to. I mean, I wouldn't. But, uh, you do have to sub yeah, to me though if you watch this. No, <laughs> <laughs> I've been stuck. Mark, okay. I've been. St uh, I do. I do want to plug one channel. Uh, I think Tharys is a really up, a good up and comer. Oh. Uh, there's a lot of eyes on him. I think Tom's going to go far. 
Oh, you're making me blush. Yeah, yeah. I'm not... if, if anyone sends shit, you send them my way. Yeah. <laughs> You'll just be like my, like my big brother. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alright, well, thank you very much everyone for watching this very long, very dishy podcast. Because <laughs> there's a lot of dishes. Yeah, man, this was... But I think if you stick through if you stick through the random hissing noises on Sam's end and the dish noises on my end, you end up with something half decent, so... I hope so. Jesus. <laughs> I hope so, anyway. But thank you for watching everyone, and I will see you later. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's my outro. <laughs> Ominous. I'm gonna keep that one. <laughs>